Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah he guy. looks pretty crappy. Wow. <laughs> Just hey, Eddie looks like a Big Mac and a large fry. Eddie looks like I a Big Mac. Uh, what's my name? What's my name? So I look like a Big Mac. Sweetie combo. Oh, yeah. I look like a sweetie, sweetie combo. What else do I look sweetie like? Combo. You know I know her. You know I know her dad, right? Oh. You know sweetie. I know her dad, right? Please. My love. Oh, my God. They can hear us now, so oh, yeah, we can okay. talk. They can hear you guys now. So. Oh, cool. So we're, are, we, are we filming now? Yeah. Yes. Facebook. Mixcloud. Mix cloud. And I'll see you all a little bit. Mm -hmm. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me make sure everything, okay, everything is online. No, I think Dante is getting too old. Ernie, you want to copy? Oh, do it. Do it. Everybody's doing it, dude. <laughs> do it. You say teach it strong when you, when you start flying in the sky. Having a yeah. cup of coffee <laughs> is initiation nice. into the party. Yeah. <laughs> the conversation with the teacher. Teach fun. Yeah? yeah? What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Conversations with a DJ. My name is Brother Reese, and you are? Oh, I'm, I'm Mr. Tay, man. I'm, you know, they know me. I'm back here uh, chilling, yeah, he, working I, the boards. Everybody know Mr. Tay runs the social media, the computers, the cameras, everything. Yeah. Jack of all trades. And then my co-host to the left, and what is your name? I am the boss of all bosses, Brooklyn. Oh, no, I am Norma Jean, that is the boss's true. boss. I'm Brother Reese's boss. I'm CJ's <laughs> boss. I'm Elias's boss. No, you're not. Yes, I am. And behind us, we have the one and only Chef Eddie. What's up, y'all? And we have Chef V. How you doing? Say hello yeah. to your audience. Hello. <laughs> so uh, today's a special show. Um, we wanted to... You, I understand you guys are used to seeing a famous DJ and we interview them and we're going to cook. We're still going to cook, but it's a little twist today. We're going to actually, uh, Brooklyn's going to interview me, Chef Eddie, Chef V, and Mr. Tay. So you guys get to know a little more about us and you know who we are. And uh, I'm going to pass the mic to Chef Eddie. What are you going to do for us? I know you, you got something planned special. So today we're doing a little something different. Today uh, everybody is back, you know, Almost to the norm. People are going into the office now. Yes. Kids are starting school. There's football practices and whatnot. So I wanted to do something that people could do when they get home. Fast meals underneath 30 minutes. Hey, you know what? They'll get all the stuff. We could chop all the stuff, you know, the night before, the day before that. All these sauces are already made. All we got to do is just mix it on up and boom. Yeah. Rachel Ray got nothing on my homie. You hear that, Rachel Ray? Eddie Ray, baby. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Chef V, what are you going to do for us? I'm going to pass the mic to you. Here you oh, go. I have a little something special today. Yes. But I will leave that for a secret Ooh. later on, to, you know, after the show. <laughs> what are you going to are you gonna make, like, some stir fry? Yeah. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to stand there and look cute. Okay? Well, the, for That's those of you job. guys that uh, <laughs> don't, uh, don't know that um, my, I'm turning 50 tomorrow, we're having a party at Branham Lounge. Yeah. Tomorrow. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Random Lounds. I, I, you know, just it's a, it, I'm blessed, man. But today it's going to be a special show because uh, Chef is. Uh, I love Chinese food. Mm -hmm. Tell and us why you love Chinese food. So you know, for you guys, uh, for for my family, when uh, my parents would get paid because we were poor, um, they would take us out to eat Chinese food, and that was like something fancy. And every time I think about Chinese food, I get that warm feeling, like I'm rich. And I know, I, you know I'm blessed, you know, and it just feels good. And I have to have Chinese food at least once or twice a week. Tell the, <laughs> tell the people our go to spot for the uh, best. Okay. Well, um, you're old. But yeah, we go to Golden House. Look who's talking. Where's that at? Uh, on Santa Teresa and Bernal. Oh, yeah. And prior to that, Golden Buddha. That was my ish, but they changed. That's no Golden House is so good that the interior hasn't changed, the menu hasn't changed, it's the, the best. staff hasn't changed, the cooks haven't oh. changed. Oh, and we like, oh, and I like Fuki. Oh, is that but that's yeah. Fusion. Is that yeah. Fusion? Yeah, yeah, it's a cool spot too, is that man. A person? Oh, that's a place. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's a place called Fuki. Are you serious? That's the real name? Yeah. All oh, that to be sarcastic, like no. Fuki. I'm like, <laughs> hey, I told you. Remember that I told you the story that my mom caught the the chinitas fighting. <laughs> So there's another Fuki on Blossom Hill in Santa Teresa, and, and the yeah the 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 chef and the front counter person they were in the they got into a fight and they were pulling their hair. So one of the guys from behind the the, the, the line grabbed a bucket of water and threw it on <laughs> to calm them down. So the the lady was like taking the orders. 
And my grandma is probably so nervous. For those of you that don't know, <laughs> rest in peace, grandma. For those of you that don't know, my grandparents, my dad's parents immigrated here from El Salvador uh, when my grandma was 19 and my grandpa was 20. Well, she is 18. My grandpa is 21. Uh, they didn't speak a lick of English. And despite being here for 50 years now, uh, the accent is incredible. Uh, <laughs> so but my grandma was a, a nervous person. Uh, so I could imagine how she reacted. She said that everybody was standing there just watching the two ladies brawling. <laughs> but anyways, yeah. So and, and did you DJ that party too? No, I didn't DJ that party. I didn't get to do that one. But so I'm excited. Those chef asked me what I want food. I I love Chinese food, dude. That's that's my story. So what are you gonna do for us? I'm gonna pass the mic to you. And look oh, to you. so <clears throat> what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it really, you know, simple, real sweet. We're gonna be doing some orange chicken, right? Because somebody oh here told God. me they love orange Norma chicken. Oh my God, Norma, hold me. We're gonna do some chow mein, and we'll do some fried rice. Fried rice with uh, the Chinese sausage and shrimp inside of it as well. Ooh, so you're just talking a little bit dirty. Of something, something, right? And then Ooh. that's it. It's gonna be like very easy. To, but I want to make sure that everybody could go home and open up the fridge and just start cooking. And if you guys ever have any questions about any of the meals I cook, you could definitely hit me up whenever you want, um, day or night. So you're right. Night or day, you know, I'm all Ooh. the way. Would you recommend what you're gonna make to like, let's say? Uh, young bachelors that like if they live in their on their own, their mama's not around. Oh, definitely. Is That's like easy enough for them to do. Put it this way, I could give it to any uh, bachelor, and he could like try to impress a lady. Ooh. It's gonna look good. Uh, I taught my. Uh, yeah. I'm learning so I can make it myself, so I don't have to go to the Chinese. Well, I mean, I still gotta go. Hey, but Josh like. is making me uh, Chinese food on our anniversary now. Oh damn! Yeah. He's voluntold. <laughs> voluntold. The same to Josh in uh, Brooklyn. Show. Okay. Well, let's <laughs> let's put the spotlight back on Mr. Tay. Mr. Tay actually celebrated his birthday before my dad did. Yes, happy birthday, Mr. Tay! Uh, you know. He turned 65, so yeah. I'm pretty sure he qualifies for all senior citizen mm -hmm. discounts at restaurants. And, and, you if know they, what? If they give it, I'll take it. Yeah, yeah. Hey, it, it's a discount. Is that no. <laughs> if, it's, if it's free, if it's free, it's me. We're taking, we're taking his ass. We're taking his ass to Disneyland. And his, his discount. That's right. And hey, you know what? And before we, oh, I'm gonna pass the mic to uh, to Chef Eddie. Um, I want to say welcome to our sister Sheila. She flew in from Arizona. She's in the house. She's my sister, bro. You're my brother. You're my sister. We're born on the same day. Yes. My birthday's tomorrow too. Oh, oh no God. way! Oh yes. Yeah. Happy birthday. See how God works. Another See? retard. No. <laughs> Two Leos, bro. Now I know why you're cool that with me. I think, <laughs> I think Happy birthday. birthday. Yeah, man. It's our first time meeting her, and I, I just hear wonderful stories about <laughs> you and your family. So, man, welcome. I I'm, think I'm, if we've all had the blessings of eating Mrs. Scott's food, we are family. Yes. <laughs> Mrs. Scott, We I can't wait to meet you. And then... Um, I don't need no more brothers and sisters. I'm good. <laughs> we're going to... Um, Sit down and eat your ham hocks with greens, please. I hope as your adoptive granddaughter that I have <laughs> unlimited greens. And your peach cobbler. I know I'm pre-diabetic, but you can figure out a, a pre-diabetic, a diabetic peach cobbler for me with ice cream. She doesn't make peach cobbler. Oh, yes. A, a sweet potato pie. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, she, doesn't do, uh, she doesn't do peach cobblers. Don't know why. She just doesn't. Sweet but she cooks good, though, bro. Sweet potato pie. That's one of those things that you could... If somebody doesn't know right, you would think it's pumpkin pie. That's what, yeah. If somebody who doesn't know right. I'm slightly I'll, offended I'll, that I'll, it's compared to pumpkin pie. I'll let that slide. Yeah. Well, you don't know, like, yeah. somebody who doesn't know, yeah, yeah, like, I'll, oh, it's a good pumpkin pie. And they're like, oh, sweet potato pie. <gasps> uh -huh. I take offense that to that. Then, you know? Right? Yeah. yeah. For real. Uh, yeah. Sweet potato pie is far superior. But well, that's okay. what he's saying, that if they don't make it right, you can mistake it. Or if you don't know. If you, yeah. Don't, yeah. you don't know. That's true. Then that must be a crappy sweet potato pie. I wouldn't know. I've never had pumpkin pie in my life. What? Well, no. Oh, well, that's why you don't like pumpkin pie. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't say I don't like it. I do like it. I never had it. Why? It's, yeah. it's like sweet potato pie. Like if you put them on the right. table, I'm taking sweet potato every time. Well, I got to say what's up to Emmanuel and Aubrey. They're in the house as well. They're hanging out, and Josh is in the building. In our newest addition to the show, Ernie. He's Ernie. taking pictures behind the Fun scenes. Fun fact, he's Eddie's little brother. Fun fact, he's Eddie's little brother. I'm the cute one, though. No. Yeah, he's, he's a lot cuter <laughs> than. He is my one. I tell <laughs> 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 
<laughs> so, so chef, I, I like this idea that, it, that <laughs> I like this idea that you're doing the 30 minute meal because I think it's important, especially mm -hmm. living in the Bay Area. Our, our time is so limited, right? I mean, we're just busy with work and and the kids with school, and, and you know who knows if we might get locked down again. You know what I mean? It's, exactly. I, I, it's the, I love how you came up with this 30 minute meal. So what are you gonna what are you gonna start off with? So today we actually um, so this way to to get this going is like things that people see in a supermarket every single day. Um, bok choy you usually don't, but like certain vegetables like cabbage you'll see all the time. Uh, mushrooms, broccoli, pre-cut, all ready to go. Um, yeah, of course, yeah. So like we got. Everything's all pre-cut, right? They have spiced mushrooms that are like a little bit smaller. They have pre-cut broccoli, cauliflower, green beans. Everything I like. All you got to do is just put it up on the pan. Some people like, you know, they cook it before. I like, you know, al dente vegetables, so I'll cook them like this raw. Ooh. And I'll let the sauces and everything else work with it. Um, another secret that we do, just for, hey, we're on the go. We got to hurry up and do this, is that. Doo -doo -doo -doo. This chicken right here, right? Believe it or not, this is like popcorn chicken. Like the popcorn chicken you find in the frozen food section over at any kind of grocery store to make it kind of like a Chinese with that texture and whatnot, where you're gonna use popcorn chicken. You don't need a deep fryer. You can put it straight up on the grill, straight up in the pan with a little bit of oil, and it's all ready to go. So it gives you that whole like, hey, I'm eating Chinese food because you don't gotta actually velvet the chicken or deep fry every single piece, which takes forever. It's, it's already done. Yeah, it actually comes in a bag. Uh, V's got it right here. Look at this is what it comes with look like right here. All right, it's already done uh, Just let everybody know I don't do this on a regular if you hire me as a caterer or anything like that <laughs> uh, this, Yeah, this is a shortcut for home for all the, you know the moms and dads or you know teenagers like when I was a teenager I used to have to cook my brother and sister. Right. I didn't know what I was doing So this right. is a good way just to go for it and actually give them still a good meal yeah, yeah, Right, yeah, we're yeah. using our veggies, but you know the only real shortcut so is this. Question? Yes So for people my age Twenty-four, by the way, for people my age, is the air fryer. The so air fryer that, that work that perfect in the air fryer. Air fryer? Yes. Okay. You get the crispy, right? The air fryer work better because it gives you a nice crisp to it. And then the meat will be. Uh, <laughs> I I barely used the air fryer this year. I didn't know. I heard of it, but I never. <laughs> I've never used it. Or Instapot. I never knew what that was, and then I was like, "What's an Instapot? It's a pressure cooker." I'm like, "No, it's not." It's like, "No, <laughs> it's an electrical one." So I tried it, and I was like, "Wow." This thing's amazing. You're making like beans in 45 minutes and like babaco in 45 really? minutes. Yeah. Uh, I've never used the Instapot either. It's I'm amazing. I'm old for my age, so I've never used those things. I don't even use the dishwasher. I thought you were 15. So this is a good way today that, you know what, um, and even the sauces, the sauces are going to be pre-made. They're going to be ready to go. Okay. So it's going to cut your, you get all this. Your all prep this time in half. Definitely. So instead of being like, you know, an hour, it's going to take you 15 up to 20 minutes to go ahead and cook a meal. Re yeah. I mean, that's perfect. Especially when you're coming home from work at five o'clock, right? Exactly. You, you got to, yeah, like you got to get the something. kids to eat something and then make sure they did their homework. I mean, that, I, I didn't think about that. That's a great, uh, tip right there mm -hmm. right I mean, even buying the vegetables already pre-cut oh yeah right? it just takes off so much time off yeah right, exactly right. it's actually a pretty good recipe for my parents so when i went off to college i lived on campus <laughs> really brooke and telling and all our business yes, like this that this is the show this so is the episode the where we show, tell right? everybody's business. really when i went off to college uh my parents didn't know what to do with themselves they had groceries that never matched uh, and then I would call them like, hey, you know, like a, a nightly Listen, check Manuel, it's not true. Because my mom would come down there if I didn't call her once a day uh, and whoop my ass in front of everybody. So I called her like I was supposed to, and I asked her what she had for dinner. And she said, oh, I don't know. I think me and Dad had some popcorn, uh, maybe a bowl of cereal. So uh, they got smart, and they used, like, Blue Apron. Yeah. And they were cooking meals together, which I thought was fantastic because when I would come home on the weekends, and they were excited to share with what recipes they were making together. And I think that's something intimate as husband and wife to be in the kitchen together. Um, and no, so we fought. Over what? Time. What were you fighting because over? Because he wasn't cutting the vegetables right. But the vegetables Norma, like that. go to your room. Go, Brooklyn, go to your room. Okay, chef, go ahead. Sorry about that. Oh, it's all good. And then, um, yeah, everything's all pre-cut. Sauces are done. Everything's ready to go. It's going to take you a good 15, 20 minutes at home with everything all done. Okay. Um, I'll make you guys a little sample play real quick. Yes. Yeah. Do that. All right. So we'll do. Um, want to do the noodles or the rice first? All right. 
Okay, so he made the executive decision over there. Bam. You guys make noodles. What, what kind of noodles do you like to use for um, chow mein? They actually have um, the yakisoba noodle, which is this one right here. Uh huh. Which I like because it has a little bit more texture to it. Okay. So they'll buy this and you'll buy it. Um, some are like pre cooked in the freezer section. Uh huh. You have it dried. Just put it in the water for a little bit right. and it's done. Um, we got this just a little bit all ready to go. Uh huh. And we'll show you guys how to do this real quick. All right. All right. So back in my day, Should I, move the I used to work at Benny Hanna, right? Really? No. Oh. <laughs> 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 so you got to see me over here, right? So kind of. Uh. Right? Yes. Almost dropped it. Bravo. <laughs> <laughs> so here we're going to go. Uh, obviously, you're going to do this in a bit, little bit of a smaller pan. But we're going to go and just kind of like, I like having fun with it. Should I move the camera? Yeah. I can see it. You can see it? Yeah. No, you can't see him. Oh, look. So good. Good? Get a little bit of onion. Not that oh one. Oh my god, are you doing the volcano? Yeah. Oh my god. Wait, you didn't light it on fire like at Benny mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> So first we're going to start off with a little bit of onions and peppers. Yeah. Right? That's the best sound right there. <laughs> and you don't want this to be right, right. overcooked, right? right? right and you don't want it to be undercooked. Can you hear that sizzle? Can they hear that sizzle mm -hmm. from Chef Eddie's oh. mic? If you want to, you need yeah. to go, go turn that other camera on. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can put the other camera because it's closer. All right. Um, another thing I like to put in there is going to be your cabbage. Right? Go ahead and put the cabbage in there. Baby. All right. A little bit more oil. Um, everybody thinks Chinese food is very healthy. It's not. There's a lot of oil in there. Perfect. All right. We're right there. Get our cabbage going. All right. I like that sound, bro. So you're right. using the you're using the a grill for this, right? Mm -hmm. no, them. Yeah. La parrilla. So are those chow mein noodles egg noodles or are they wheat noodles? They're egg noodles. Egg noodles. That's good. So look it, we got it right there. Um, people put different things in it, right? I like going cabbage. I love cabbage in mine. Um, I want you guys to hear the sizzle. There we go there. It smells so good. And then we're gonna put a little bit of vegetables. I love peppers and onions, and my Chinese food like for everything. Me too. Why? I don't know. It's kind of weird. And then we have. It doesn't even have to be Chinese food to have onions right? and peppers. We got a stir fry sauce. This is a bot stir fry sauce. Um, it literally says stir fry sauce on it. <laughs> really? Yeah. Again, disclaimer: Chef Eddie will make it all fresh if you hire him to cater. A so little bit of that. And then. <laughs> How's that smell? Oh man, it smells the oh, it smells good, bro. I'm, I can't wait. It's like I'm gonna smell like it in a minute. Mm. <laughs> Gosh, get ready. Give me smell a plate. Snacks and and how, how long do you cook this for, chef? Uh, this will be on your stovetop for about five minutes. Five minutes. You're gonna get the veggies all nice and hot. Um, sauteed the vegetables, throw uh -huh. in the noodles, sauce, and you are done. Like they do at Benihana's with a little heart yeah. thing. There we go. And a boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Since uh, it's your time to shine, Chef Eddie, uh, what's your favorite Chinese dish? That's tough, huh? Um, believe it or not, I'm ghetto. I like sweet and sour pork. Yeah, I, lo <laughs> I like sweet and sour pork too, bro. <laughs> right? I just love, I love pork. And in sweet and sour pork, you can't go wrong. Yeah, you um, can't. Nobody else in my family likes it, though, so it's kind of hard what? to like. Yeah, I'm the only one that really likes the it. The girls don't like sweet and sour pork? No, no? they like orange chicken okay. and like beef and broccoli is a thing. All right. All right. I like lemon chicken. Lemon so, chicken we got our plate it. over here. There we go. And. What about you, V? What's your favorite Chinese dish? I love honey walnut prawn. Ooh. Ooh. Fancy. Uh, that's good. Yeah, I, I knew you were a bougie. That's why we get along. What's your favorite uh, Chinese restaurant, uh, Chef Eddie? Ooh. I used to like uh, Pearl. 
Pearl River? Pearl. Oh, yeah, yeah, right there off of Blossom Hill. And, yeah, and growing Santa? up, it used to be this place called um, Lee's Kitchen. And Lee's then Kitchen? It was in Santa Clara. Uh-huh. And then I w- went to the south side in, like, Pearl River, Pearl uh-huh. City, I don't remember yeah. what it's called. But usually I make it at home. Right. And then China Sticks in Santa Clara when I'm lazy. Right. Uh, China Sticks. Yeah, it's yeah, not bad. That's Josh's stomping ground. Dim, so dim sum that. on Sundays. Is awesome. Over there? Yeah. Chef V, what's your favorite Chinese restaurant in, in South Bay? I'm from the East Bay. So oh, I'm you're from the East, East Bay. Bay. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, some of our viewers might be from the East Bay. Yeah. Tell them where to go. So, growing up, there was always this place called Pine Garden. Uh huh. Grew up in Union City. Okay. So, as a kid, my parents would take us there. We would go there. Nice. Yeah. We can't see the. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. Okay. Those Reese. And there. then, um, but my second go-to is uh, Rose Garden, which is also in Union City. So, of course, my favorite. <laughs> we'll have to go over there to your stomping grounds and get the walnut buns. Oh yeah, delicious there. <laughs> I know it's my favorite. <laughs> right. You got the chopsticks. And a whoop. Presentation is key, everybody. Definitely. Wow, that didn't take that long to to make. That's actually a, a good uh, quick I think you meal. Can make that, Dad. Oh, I, I definitely. Think, I think you can make that. I bet you Reese probably make it better than I can. I'm gonna have to try. Uh, but someone's gonna have to buy the stuff for him. I got you. <laughs> All right. Well, you like that boy? You gonna do the honors? Yes, I, I'm going to. You're going to taste it, Reese. I'm going to taste it, man. Your food? You're gonna eat the food? Yep. Pretty easy, pretty quick. Can you blow on it? I already see something bad happening in the kitchen. How do you, do you like think that that's your Reese, mic? Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to use that mic before we started the show. And he's like, you don't use that. That's mine. And I was like, what makes it yours? That's Now I know why. Yeah, I'll do it again. It's so good. I missed it. You like mm-hmm. it? No, I yeah. like the flavor. It's so good. It's man. good, right? And it's yeah. so easy. It's just like boom, boom, boom. Anybody can do it. Uh, vegetables, I don't like overcooked. I like a little bit of dente. Yeah, like so it. people are like, oh, they're still. No, they've got right. a nice bite to them. I'm the ultimate tester. Mm. I like how it's really well balanced and it's not too salty either. Mm-hmm. A lot of that is due to the soy sauce. Some people use real soy sauce, right? Which is going to give you a lot more saltiness to it mm-hmm. when you cook it or if you reduce it too much. Mm-hmm. So you got to be careful on what kind of a soy sauce you're doing. And I like the little dash of uh, sriracha yeah, to give it a little spice. kick. You yeah, sriracha in it. Yeah, sriracha. Right. Um, yeah, that's pretty easy to make. It's all mm-hmm. store bought stuff. Everything's ready to go. Sheila, you um, can't go wrong with that. Oh man, I'm going to pass the plate around so everybody can taste it. Where's the oh, fork? Don't give me no uh for no, it being no. five minutes and store butt that's off the hook. Eddie. Right, it's not bad. Always sprinkle the love on the right. No Chinese you can't give me no sticks to eat. Daisy over there, Yeah. Brothers drop four or five pounds worth of food with a fork. You gonna give me some sticks. Yeah, you don't like to eat with the chopsticks, bro? No, I don't we got to get it Dante work. the kid ones. No, I don't want them. Don't give me no chopsticks. Why? Oh Since you eat the chopsticks, birthday, right? Dante, yeah. why are you uh, getting a bite oh first? Oh, my God. It's pretty quick, pretty yeah. easy, ready to go. That, um, is, that was great. If you guys want the recipe, let me know. It's going to be $250 for each recipe today. I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 no, nah, for real, honestly, anybody, a lot of people have reached out to me about certain ways I do things and recipes and whatnot. I'll definitely let you know, and I have no problem doing that. Would you, would you, that was a good it's flavor, it's right? Good. It's good. I yeah, like that you didn't sour. put the sliced carrots in it. So no, you know what's delicious? And I like how fast you put that together. Like, you know what I mean? That's something quick and easy, you know? And Definitely. It, sm- mm-hmm. it smelled amazing when you were cooking it, oh, too. So the house would you know, have that nice oh, aroma. Yeah, it has an effervescent smell to it. Um, yep. Very good to my palate. Oh, very good to your palate? Oh, my It has a full, <laughs> robust uh, taste, flavor. Yes, it does. So I like the Ciroc, dude. Oh, as your co-host, since the show is about you guys... Uh, why don't we go around and uh, once Dante stops choking, tell us what your go-to dish is. Like you're in a rush, 
or you're limited on time, what is your go-to dish? That is the hardest question It could question be microwaved, ever. it could be toaster oven, it could be air fryer. What is your go-to dish? Because you guys are all parents. So yeah, like, Taylor. I don't. I don't know you to be to? like that. Do you, do you like to put like a Dante cooks for those of you that don't know. Yeah, he makes a mean hey. fried cat. I don't really have a, 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 a like a real quick dish. Oh, the other hamburgers. Yeah, I guess hamburgers. That's your go-to, right? And it don't take that long to make a hamburger. Right? No, it doesn't. It's 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 quicker than getting in the line of McDonald's. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. and it's healthier. It's definitely better for you. A little better, a little better. You know, you put what you want to make it make it taste a little better. Uh, uh, so, uh, after so, what's, so what do you put on your hamburger? Like what's what is your season? Wednesday burger after Soul Parlor? Yeah, that's right. After Wednesday, he'll go home and make a burger. Yeah, every Wednesday <laughs> after Soul Parlor, Dante will refuse my food because he is going Wednesday home to make burger a burger. Days, yeah. Um, well, that's awesome. I usually let it sit. You know, I get it out in the morning because my meat's frozen. Right. I put some Lowry's on it, and mm. I, lately I've been using the the, the Spanglish. Uh, the acelero. 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 All purpose. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. And I slap some of that on it, let it thaw out. As it thaws, it just soaks right in. Ooh. Yeah, this stuff right here on all. Oh, yeah, from this stuff right here. And I'm not just saying that because this is one of the sponsors. They have they have a lot of different seasonings, and they're yeah. coming up with more. Wow. Um, one of my friends just sent me a picture just now. I said, "Man, I had I got this in my in my." This so he's really in Arizona. Good. Yeah, Shout and, out to the hand. Yeah, in Arizona they have them. They got them all over the United States. Lunardi's in San Jose carries them for sure. Wow. Nice, um, nice. So, I, I, and if I you like guys it. ever want anything else, any recipes with them, let me know. I could definitely point you to the right yeah, direction. Yeah, so I put that on there. Let it uh-huh. sit. Made a little Lowry's, and I put some. Uh, I may put some garlic powder on it. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Gotta have two pieces of cheese. It's right. on top but of what kind of cheese? Uh, Sargentos. Not, oh, you not bougie, not. huh? He is yeah. bougie. I can't, I can't, I can't do uh, you can't, craft no more. You can't oh. do no craft okay, no more? Okay, but can't the bun, no is it a brioche bun, a potato bun? Is it Old two, school, baby. Is it two slices of white bread? <laughs> two wheat two bread. slices of whole wheat bread. Do you toast I grew, up, <laughs> I grew up on that. Lightly toasted. Not, don't even brown. Just so it gets a little stiff to it. Yes. Me. Boom, put that in there. A little sandwich spread. Um, some bacon, my, I'm good to go. My mama didn't even toast the bun. No, man. No? Mustard on a, on a hamburger? We did wheat wheat buns. And I, I thought that was a hamburger bun. Yeah. Sandwich spread. I Tomato? put sandwich spread on it because it, you know, so it right. has that little sweet flavor. Right. That but sounds no, like I, I love hamburgers hamburger? too. Yeah. And then of course you know my catfish, but catfish is not a definitely not a quick uh, thing because you gotta wash. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. Season it. It's. I mean, it's it takes uh, it takes way too long for you but to cook it for us. If you, if you for, for you people out there who do make catfish, put some tahini on it next time. Ooh. Oh yeah, he did that for us. Like yeah, a few some, months ago, little, and it was off the hook. It yeah. was. A and get your catfish at Costco, yeah, and you cut Costco. it. Yeah, go to Costco. They got the best fish. Uh, Saturday mm-hmm. mornings is when they usually bring in the fresh fish. So if you go, I don't know if you could tell people Saturday that mornings. that's our go-to. Yeah, <laughs> that's our plug. And it's cheaper. It's it's a little cheaper. You get more, and it's it's a better quality. Fish, yeah. But it's definitely uh, way it's better. Of course, I use Lowry's. I'm a black person. I use Lowry's on it. Cornmeal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, got the Lowry's on it. Uh, not too much. You got to be careful. Don't want it to be too salty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the tahini. You just that's turned 65. Quicker, gotta watch your sodium. That's a quicker uh, uh, recipe seasoning. It's just Lowry's and some tahini. Yeah. Boom. It 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 uh, it's right mm-hmm. there. I mean, there's plenty of ways to do it. I know people who put parsley on it. I know people who put all kinds of crazy stuff on on catfish. Nice. Pe- a lot more pepper. A lot more. Uh, so I've seen people put cayenne on it. No. You know. So <laughs> it's it's do what you it's do what you like. You know. Dante's it's one of those things you can catfish. Do. Recipe. I haven't put cayenne yeah, on it because I don't eat spicy yeah. like that. But I mean, you know, the tahini is a, has enough kick for me. Tahini. When, when I, when I, when and I it put on yeah. And that was like, that, I actually found that by accident. My nephew, he was like, we were, he was in the kitchen with me. He's, he was, Junior's what, nine? Yes. And I'm cooking and I, just, I need something else to put on it. You don't try something else. And he goes, put some tahini on it. I was like, good idea, nephew. <laughs> Nine-year-old. And, and, and it worked. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a culinary expert at nine. There we go. Yeah, so it was a, it was one of those things I found by accident, mm-hmm. and, it, and it worked. It worked very well. So that's, that's what I put on mine from now on. Was Pops, a, uh, did he cook at home, or was it mostly moms who cooked? Uh, mostly moms. moms. He did cook, but mostly moms. Yeah. Would you watch her cook when you yeah. were growing up? Yeah. yeah. But you don't know that the greens recipe? I never, I wasn't a, I, I'll eat them, but I'm not a big fan where I want to eat them all the time. Yeah, it's yeah, bushes. Wow, that's so it's good. bushes. Your mom makes it though, bro. It's bushes. I, I never really was a big bushes eater. Oh, 
We gotta have the ham hock in there. Yeah, of course she does. Oh. It, it takes that. She it was takes, shanking it. Takes it, 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 it I don't think anyone can replicate. Seriously. I don't. Uh, I, like I said, I just it was bushes to me. It's, just, it's a step above spinach, and I wasn't a big spinach kid. It's easy. I'm like, I don't like bushes. <laughs> so I never really got into. I mean, I eat them now, but yeah. it's, it's, I don't have to have them. What about you, Dad? What's your go-to dish? I, I know what it is. What? I know what, you, what to make. Oh, to, to make. <laughs> I'll make a Salvadorian McMuffin. A what? what the hell is that? Uh, why are you lying to the people? I've never seen you make that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'll tell you what my dad's going to Oh, so now you, you know. <laughs> I do know. <laughs> it used to be pancakes, but he loves everything burnt, including his toast. And so I was like, hell no, you're off pancake duty. And he's like, why? How do you? Because he burns his pancakes. He leaves you, them on too long. And I, how do he you do cooks that? them do too you, high. Are, are you standing there watching it? He cooks it on high heat. Yeah, dude, I keep it out too. How do you? Exactly. It's no, but how do you make it Black and brown, burn? bro. It's all black and tino, right? That's what he, he does <laughs> it on purpose. <laughs> I like mine to have a little crunch to it. Well, and then just put the butter on listen, it. Listen, okay, you want to get a little crispy edge to it? Take some. And I like uh, the burnt taste. You got? You, do you guys have? Do you guys That's have bacon wrong. grease? Do you guys have bacon grease yeah. in the house? Okay, when you cook before you cook the pancakes, put some bacon grease on it. Y'all then are too you put old the to be put the that. pancake mix on, and it makes the I edges know, real crispy. That's it gives a, it, 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 you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, it gives it crispy. You put a little. Hey. You put if you want to be formed, you can put any. You can put any type of grease. You put my deca. <laughs> any type of grease will do it, but the bacon bacon grease just gives a little so more flavor. So now that he's off pancake duty, because I officially kicked him off of that. Uh, he cuts, I don't know how he does this, but he cut, he makes a uh, chorizo con papa and he cuts his potatoes into triangles. How he does it, I have no idea. I feel hey, like it takes way longer. <laughs> oh my there you God. go. And he puts a shit ton of onions. That's good. It's flavor. But like. Not a lot, but a shit ton. <laughs> so I love that. You know it's a lot. Uh, what about you, Shippy? Quick oh meal, God. your go-to quick meal. Well, my daughter's super picky. Like she, she's the pickiest eater ever, ever. The irony. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know. I make everything. I could cook everything, but my daughter will not eat anything. Um, so it's basic things like pancakes. I can make chicken nuggets for her, like legit make little chicken because she loves Chick Fil A. Is like her favorite. Chicken place. She's bougie too. I know. Expensive, <laughs> right? mom's I know. <laughs> it's like, mom, can we get Chick Fil A? But you got a job. I know. <laughs> she does have a job. She has to feed the cat. <laughs> oh, there, you go. there you go. Responsibility. Right. <laughs> but yeah. So mostly she do loves. You cook a lot at home. I try to as much as I can. She's a working mom. I am a working right. mom, and yes, I work sometimes long hours, of and she. When I go grocery shopping, oh. when I go grocery shopping, I already know what I'm going to be cooking ahead of time. Okay, cool. And even for her lunch, because she doesn't eat school lunch, because again, she's picky. So yeah. I have to make sure I have all her stuff that she wants wow. to eat at home, in the cupboards, in the fridge, plenty My of fruit. Never. <laughs> I'm the mom of the house. Shut up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Chef Eddie? Uh, my go-to, believe it or not, is if I'm home late, the kids are there, everybody's there at home, I'm going to make some breakfast. I love yeah. breakfast for dinner. Yeah. Me too. Breakfast That's for like dinner is the ish. Like, like, I like that. Aubrey, like, you too? Yeah. Papas con chorizo. I got rico. Quick, and then a fried egg over on top. Ooh. And if you got any salsa, cool. If not, then using Cholula. There and you go. Here's, I'm going to give you guys a secret. It's not so much of a secret. Get the salsa authentica at Trader Joe's. I don't like Trader Joe's. I'm like anti Trader Joe's. Really? Why? I just don't like them, dude. Like, no? I don't like you now. <laughs> I think it's so. weird. That's you know what it is? It's like How everybody tells happen? me, like, oh, get it at Trader Joe's, get it at Trader Joe's. And I'm like, well, I'll try it. And I tried it. I'm like, this is garbage. Yeah, I'm you know going what? to rob my fool. I'm going to give you, I'm going to put you under the salsa. I got it in my fridge. Because right people told me there was like an elote uh, seasoning for the corn. They were like, oh, no. I get it at Trader Joe's. I'm like, okay. It's to die for. Yeah, it's to die for. That's I know your shit, but you're going to love it. And I tried it, and I was like, nah. You can, hear like, you can tell that this wasn't made by a beaner, right? Nah, yeah, it wasn't. It was like Parmesan cheese instead of cotija. Oh, no. It was like oh, paprika. And I'm like, yeah, nah, nah. nah. I, I threw it across the room. <laughs> and they're like, oh, Trader Joe's makes the best dressing, Mike. Really? 
Do they? So, so, so for you is uh, breakfast for dinner. Breakfast for dinner, breakfast for lunch. I can eat breakfast all day long. Oh, uh, and my thing is, cake, papas yeah. con chorizo, and if I got the time, we're making some beans. Ooh. Homemade flour tortillas and a salsa de mocajete. Refried beans or whole beans? Refried, I can't do whole yeah. beans. Yeah, I know refried. Hear that, Norma? Refried <laughs> beans. She likes whole beans. <laughs> It's like, it's just the, the ghetto meal that I love. He doesn't cut his potatoes and triangles. I'm not that artistic. <laughs> See? I don't, got, I don't got enough like, art like that. It's rustic, bro. He, he and, I leave, and I leave the, the skin on there. A so they, bit, get right? the, they get the vitamins. Me too. Who has time to cut them in triangles like that? Like, like No, I, I know how he does it. I, I know how he does it. He cuts it in half. Yeah. And it cuts it into like yeah. sixes. And then ding, 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 ding. Aha, uh -huh. ah, well, there you go. Ah, ah, well, well. Well. <laughs> That's how you do it. Hey, it tastes good, Tay. When, when I put the chorizo like in it. Because you cut them in triangles, it uh -huh. tastes good? With the chorizo in it. His logic, I just, You know what's I funny? I, I've, uh, potatoes, well, outside of hash browns, potatoes are not a staple. Whole potatoes like it's not a staple of breakfast for me. No? Oh, bro, I love uh, potatoes. We got to have, we gotta have yeah. papas, especially Norma. If she had a little potato, she gets all but mad. I just don't eat a lot of papas. No? <laughs> no, I'm not even trying to be funny. It's like. It's for real? Yeah, papas don't eat a lot of papas. Yeah, I need papas with. Papa's and eggs. Dude, I love it. Uh, you know what? I, we we got to do the next one. Uh, we should do a dinner for uh, breakfast, breakfast for dinner. For oh, let oh me know. Oh, my God. Let's do it. But you know what? My, no, but my favorite is that dinner omelet. omelet. I want to know how to make. You know how to make omelets? Can I put them on yeah, my Yeah, that's the thing. I'm, I'm pretty, I'm breakfast is, uh, you know, uh, I've been, you got to realize, I've been cooking uh, pancakes. You know, that's why I'm always talking about pancakes. People are, always ask me about my pancakes on Facebook. Oh. But, we got to do a pancake party, you know? I've next time we do Soul Parlor. I've been doing pancakes since I was like eight, seven, eight years old. Yeah. Yeah, that was a, you get up, you make your, my mama cooked the bacon, and we just made our own pancakes. Oh, that's so dope. I was making pancakes, I was like seven, eight, that's from my father. My, ask, next time you see Patrick Wilson, ask him about my dad's pancakes. No, he said, he told me that one thing, he goes, man, Pops makes a mean pancake. Patrick, <laughs> Patrick swears by him, he's like, man, he made the best pancakes ever. It's <laughs> so the this, love, you know, man. It's the pancakes, pancakes, eggs, grits. That's dope, man. So I have a question, because I heard you say, or you said Chick-fil-A. Right? Yeah. Okay. I'm a oh, snob when it comes go. to like fast food chicken places, right? <laughs> so like when I go back east, because I travel, right? Uh huh. It's all about Bojangles. No, all right. Correct. You, oh, you know what Bojangles yes, is? Correct. How many Bojangles, Bojangles ain't? I'm it's a just. Poor college I've been had, had it, but I've heard about it. But Bojangles, what is that? Is that is that is that Midwest <laughs> or South? It's or? more South. So like Bojangles. Yeah. Yeah. You'll find uh, they actually make their own biscuits. They batter their own chicken. Ooh. It's a fancy church's chicken. That's what it looks like. Really? But it's just like really, really good stuff. Um, oh, when I go to like LA, whole. Texas area like that, I get uh -huh. a Raising Cane. There's no more. Uh, oh, I've heard of Raising Cane's. Oh, yeah. Raising Cane's is real good. Do they have that in AZ, sis? Yeah. yeah. They just built one up in Manteca or Tracy or something like that. Yeah, yeah Raising Whoa, Cane's. Like exactly. It's off the hook. So when people say, oh, Popeyes or oh, Chick fil A, I'm like, nah, I'm good. You, you can't. You can't. I like Popeyes. I like it's Popeyes. all right. I like Popeyes. I, don't, I, I, don't like I, I still like original KFC. I love KFC. KFC, KFC sucks now. Yeah, it's yeah? Not the same. Un unpopular. They don't do I love it. I like Boston Market's cornbread. Yeah, something wrong Amazing. with you. Amazing. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Stuff like that is just hilarious because people have so many different like <laughs> tastes. I, I like the I like the in the box jiffy. Real. You make the, the Jiffy cornbread. Oh, yeah. yeah. This like, guy's okay, never made cornbread No, in but you make it. Mom make it. I like that. He is <laughs> a liar. Oh, yeah. And your, uh, Lionel made us some killer Casey's. Lonnie. Lonnie killer uh, <laughs> style. Uh, <laughs> Uh, a barbecue. <laughs> and he made he made it. I know that was a Jiffy it. joints. Fun fact: My dad either doesn't know your name or he will make it up. Or just I'm quite sure Lonnie used. used being from where he's from, he probably used Jiffy. Yeah, I know that. Mom, that Jiffy box. Yeah, yeah Brooklyn. Jiffy I mean, not Brooklyn. <laughs> Tippy. Our chihuahuas are fighting. They fight fucking at least once on. every episode. Yeah. <laughs> I think the first time, I, security. The first time I tasted Popeyes was yeah, before. Yeah, but then, uh, Elias and then the girl. Elias and Brooke is two and, kids. And CJ and, 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 and Ash. And and the girls. And Ash. And Ash and Maddie. And um, one thing I got to bring up, and I, like, you were on this show a while ago. Uh-huh. I can't remember the guy's name. Oh, the guy that was interviewing him? Yeah. You and know. you know what? I was like, no. Draw dropped on like the history of how like you started out in music. If you could share that story, because I was telling her, I'm like, he used to be in a band, like in a band. <laughs> like Let's what? I'm like, it. they Let's were like the Salvadorian like Jacksons, dude. <laughs> like for real, like. And now we are the Salvadorian Mexican version of the Osbournes. Right? <laughs> no, you know, like, I'm, I'm, 
Yeah, my, my family, uh, my dad is a musician from El Salvador, and he, like, started out in the, in the 60s. So when he moved to the States, he we, we moved to L.A., and that's where I'm originally from. I was born there. So my dad would play in a, a lot of uh, Mexican bands. And then when we moved to the Bay Area, he didn't have no one to jam. So one day when we were little, my dad walked in the garage, and he saw my brother on sitting on a stool like this, and I put the bass on him, and he was already plucking the, the, the strings on beat, and I played the drums. So, and then my, I thought we were going to get in trouble, you know, because we were playing on his instruments. But he's like, he got he like whoa so he went and bought us instruments so when most kids were playing cars and you know transformers and going <laughs> i i had to watch my siblings back then it was a little bit different right so you, you could be 10 and watch the house right <laughs> we did that. and uh so we would uh stay in the house all day especially summer my dad would not let us out because there were all the gang bangers and all the little cholillos and so we had to stay home and we would practice all day and that's what I would do, play drums. And then my dad would get us gigs. I don't know how he got he got us gigs, dude. <laughs> we, I, he, we would play, like, uh, one of our biggest gigs that the Cuellar family's done was uh, the, the Mexican Independence, actually the Latin America Independence. And it was downtown San Jose, and I remember the, they had all these bands, and then the Cholos were getting tired of hearing uh, all the banda and uh, Mexican music, so they want to hear Santana, but those guys didn't play that. So finally, my I don't know, my dad, he talked to them, and they helped us unload and set up our equipment. And then after that, the, the Cholo stopped the, the Mexican band from playing, and we had our own PA. So we're like, fuck the PA for the, the festival. We had our own shit. So we didn't have a guitar player, and they want to hear Santana. And my dad, he's real fast. He's witty. He connected a, a distortion for a guitar and plugged it into the our Fender Rhodes, and he made the Fender Rhodes sound like a guitar. So my dad goes, one, two, three, four. My brother's all, doom, 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 doom. Everybody lost it, bro. And I'm all like, tick, 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 And my dad was like, tee, 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 tee. <laughs> on the guitar. And then the, I, the, the, the band that they, I felt bad for them, but they were like, they were hella mad, you know? Well, because we took the show. don't really listen to Banda, <laughs> so we like things like Santana and Cumbia. Yeah, so, yeah so, we, so pretty much our, our repertoire was like classic standard, you know, like bolero music, mm -hmm. but like our, uh, our versions of it. And we would play like a lot of cumbias. Wait, but how old were you guys when you did that? So I was like nine or ten, and Carlitos was like eight years old. And, and Channel 14, you know, Univision was there. He goes, and this is how we end the festival. Because my dad would buy us like sh pants from Zodis and shoes from like Kmart. They, were, like, they weren't even leather. They were pleather. And his feet were burning. And he goes, and this is how we end the festival. And my brother's all crying. <laughs> but yeah, we, we did a lot of events like that. He'll call like we had friends in the radio, um, and they would have like movie premieres, like like Triato Garden mm -hmm. and, and Willow Glen. And my dad would have us set up the equipment, and we would play before the show. But my thing was like because my, my dad liked playing standard Spanish music, uh, people would just sit there and just watch us play this stuff. So I, I kind of like grew like I didn't like doing it no more. That's why when I got into DJing and I saw the the. The power of music, how it moved people. I told my dad, I'm done. Because we grew up playing in churches, too. And I got tired of just going Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. One day, my dad caught me getting stoned with the pastor's kid. He goes, aha, cabrón, no wonder you're playing con feeling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll be baked playing the drums like, in the church. <laughs> and this is for God. God made the plant. <laughs> so, tell us, so tell us about you getting into DJing then. When did that start? So the, the sure. DJing started, uh, like it, it started, you know, with the whole breaking, you know, and the hip hop thing. And then we got a chance to... One of our trips that our family went, we went to New York. We had family in Queens, and I was like 13 years old. And my cousins, I had older cousins, and they had uh, uh, my cousin Tony. He was a DJ, and he was an avid record collector, and he would let me play on his stuff. So when I came back home, I got a newspaper out, and I bought my first equipment. Actually, me, Carl, and Jason, we all pitched in money and bought, uh, you know, one turntable, and then we already had another turntable we got from Carl's dad. Big ups to Desta Owens and my friend Jason Atencio because he would let us borrow the Radio Shack mixer with a crossfader that I eventually ended up buying. 
So now people know why that my name is Brooklyn, and legally it's Brooklyn. I yeah. just get asked, like, uh, is that really your name? And it's like, no, I just made that up. I, I love New York. It, it, New York changed my life, and I haven't been there since that first trip, and I want to take you guys. So you experience the people, the energy, and, you know, it's the, the music. It's, it's something that, I mean, yeah, you know, the drugs. We have that everywhere, but... This New York has a it's just a whole different energy. You've been to New York, right? Yeah, I've been to New York. Uh Brooklyn actually is a whole different place than what everybody uh sees from like the nineties with like you know with uh Biggie and stuff like that. Yeah, right, right. Brooklyn is actually a very like hipster area because like It got gentrified now, right? Very gentrified. Like the the hotel I was staying at uh -huh. was like a brand new Hilton and it was like beautiful views and then you walk a couple blocks and it's just like hood. Another block over, it's like, damn, I'm like in Beverly Hills almost. It's like, it's crazy how Brooklyn is now. Um, yeah, New York is a totally different ball game than here, though. I wanted to move there, when, like in the '90s, before I met Norma, because my thing, I really, if, if people ask me what's my passion really about DJ, I like seeing people dance, but I love the nightclub. That's where I came from, the clubs, you know, DJ. That's why I like mixing, you know, mm -hmm. where a lot of DJs like cutting and going, you know. I, for me, the movement of the dance floor and taking on a musical journey, that's where I get off on. That's why I don't mind DJing for six, seven hours, because that really takes control of the party, you know. Since we've been advertising this episode as, like, getting to know you guys, and more so you, Dad, because it's your half a century birthday. Um, I love saying that. It makes my parents mad. Um, <laughs> someone asked, well, Elsa asked, who was a big influence in your DJ slash music career? Paulie D from MTV. Oh, really shut up, <laughs> <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> That's my era. The, uh, the, I have, you know, I have many influences, but like for for me, the, of course, the the uh, uh, the guy at DXT who did the scratches on on Rocket, and then on a, um, and then in a in a local level, it, you know, for me it was Michael Erickson and Cameron Paul, and then. As I got older and and, ow, ow. and I started understanding, you know what DJs were. We had these local DJs, and for me, um, and th th to me, they're still the greatest. DJ Jam Hassan and uh, Jazzy Jim. Um, what you say? DJ Jam Hassan. Okay, you said yeah. DJ Jam. No, no, DJ Jam. <laughs> oh yeah, DJ Jam Hassan. He's <laughs> dude. Like when we were in uh, fifth and sixth grade, he, he would make mixtapes because he grew up. Uh, in South San Jose, went to Andrew Hill, Andrew Hill yeah. and um, my friend's older brothers went to Andrew Hill. Well, so when we're playing basketball, and he would like, "You got to hear this mix, man!" And, and I would you hear him just basketball. Yeah, well, you know, in the, in the you know, in the, the front oh, yard, bro. Oh, you know, okay. and, uh, he's been this big yeah. since he was five. <laughs> but I remember just hearing yeah, this mix I've it. And and Norma, I'm telling my story. <laughs> Ah. Go ahead, go ahead. And I would, that's when I've heard, heard him playing Scratching the It's Time, oh, like yeah. going back to back. Oh, yeah. Where was it at? Right. It was on the street? Uh, it, you just made a mix for, from Andrew that. Hill. Oh, they were playing. Yeah, yeah, it was a tape. You know how everybody would get tapes? Mm -hmm. And then Jazzy yeah. Jim would put, put out, out mixes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Jazzy Jim would put out a lot of mixes. Yeah, where have I heard that name? Jazzy Jim was a DJ that came from San Francisco, but he came to um, San Jose in the, in, the, in the 80s, like in the mid-80s. <laughs> And he used to do all the big battles against like Cuber and all, all the DJs. Like he had a, a mobile DJ crew called Skyway Sounds. This dude was so ahead of his time and incredible because he would mix on three turntables. He was like one of the first guys I would see incorporate a drum machine with his set live, wow. bro. And this is back then. He was doing four track mixes that are like you can hear them now on Mixcloud. Legendary, man. And I uh, was actually, he used to go to um, a lot of the high schools and play. So all those guys like D. Jam Hassan, Greg Iceman, um, you know, Jazzy Jim. I mean, the Flag Brothers, another big instrumental folks to me. Uh, my man, uh, D. Uh, Mashud, a.k.a. Uh, MD, another DJ that, that really inspired me. And then, you know, of course, Albert Campo and, and Richard G. Uh, molded me who I am today. What was your first... Gig. And I hope it's not you DJing at San Teresa High School, like homecoming, because when Miss Burrell was my Spanish teacher, she was first uh, Elias' Spanish teacher. <laughs> but Elias doesn't talk as much as I do. I get that from my dad. Nobody does. Uh, shut up, Dante. <laughs> you're not talking. Uh, 
she told me one time that uh, you were sent to like DJ a homecoming thing on the field or something, and that like I don't know something went wrong where you didn't show up or. <laughs> oh, I was hungover and I didn't yeah, want to play because I played at the club. So like, no, it wasn't. I wasn't DJ. I was supposed to drive. Uh, Uncle Carlos' convertible car in a parade. I'm all f that. I don't want to do that. So ma- uh, grandma and grandpa went on my okay. behalf. So, so that's what, what it was. You, so she what was your first was gig? Yeah. In high school? <laughs> so what was your first in gig? In high school? Yeah. So what was that your was first after gig? high school. Your my DJ first gig. gig. My first gig was a family party uh, for um, those Cubanitos, uh, Alicia and Manuelito. So I was back then. I was playing like Norsera Summertime. Uh, Living in video, like that kind of tracks. So, uh, Nancy Martinez, be, um, you know, that's on tonight. I have a question. What? Um, what was your first solo song that you sang? I, you sang like a song a, solo? Did, was, did it start with something like Designer? You went solo, Chris? No, like, no, Norma, no, no, I don't want to talk wait, about wait, that. You went solo? What? I don't even know this. Tell us. You went you solo from the, yeah. from the Cuello? Uh, no, my dad, so my dad wanted to be hip, and he, and he, because we would get mad because we had to play the. You know, Sabor a Mi, you know, all of those, those kind of songs, right? So my at that time, Designer Music came out, and I didn't, I, yeah, I didn't drop, my sack didn't drop it, so I had a high-pitched <laughs> voice. Oh, my God. As my brother says, I it's sound like, like a bitch. So I had to sing uh, Designer Music. And my dad, because... So what what, 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 what event was this? So, dude, my dad, because, okay, guys, you guys got to understand, we were poor. We didn't, we didn't own a house, so we moved a lot, you know? So we would stay in certain neighbors in South San Jose for like three years, and then we'll move to another. So that's how I know the entire South San Jose because I moved. He literally went to every school. <laughs> so my dad, district. being my dad, you know how I'm always telling, hey, you guys need to teach. <laughs> that's where I get it from. He would talk to the principal. So hi, my name is Mauricio. This is my son, Mauricio Jr. This is my, and, he, you know, he gives the whole fucking spill. And all of a sudden, we're doing the Christmas pageant. Okay, so, so once again, what you know what's was messed up? I have that at Parkview habit. Elementary School. Parkview? We know Brooklyn. Yeah, Parkview Elementary School, and you know I was like in fifth or sixth grade, when, and I was so embarrassed because again we had to wear a uniform, the red pants from Zodies, the bootleg checker vans. Zodies? What's Zodies? Zodies. It was like a Kmart. Oh, I never heard of it. You don't remember? It's like a Gemco. Remember Gemco? There? I remember Gemco. Well, what was Zodies? At? Zodies was on Blossom Hill, where where Home Depot's at. That was. That was uh, Zodi's, and right next to it was Pacific Stereo. Okay. Can, you, can you still sing that? No, Norma, I can't. I, to this <laughs> day, it. no, right. I hate that song. <laughs> I don't like that song. I hate it. What song was it? Designer, Designer music. music. Remember yeah. that one? We're going to have to look that Eddie, up. Eddie, he's probably not old enough. Designer yeah. Okay, it was like a high energy song. song. It came out when I was in high school. It, so I was, that was that yeah, song sounds awful. It, so Eddie, you might. Was you alive? When were you born, Eddie? I was born in '82. Yeah, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. You missed that. Yeah, that, that was that was the yeah, year. I had a rough childhood. I could look. I look a lot older. <laughs> You're just wiser. You right? know, you did ten years in the pinta. You know what I mean? <laughs> when the comes out. <laughs> uh, your son-in-law, Josh, wants to know uh, when you knew that hip hop or the DJ movement was going to take off. He didn't. Or did you know? And no. part two of the question is, which DJ or artist made you made hip hop popular, in your opinion? Well, uh, yeah, you know when 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 you when I saw musicians, this is like I'm talking about eighty six, eighty seven, and that's when like really hip hop was starting to take, especially the West Coast sound was changing, you know, because we were we were accustomed to more of the electrical electro hop, meaning like Planet Rock, those kind of beats. So a lot of people don't know that Dr. Dre used to do electro music, so it was like one thirty, one twenty eight, it was like boom, tsh, boom, tsh, boom, tsh, boom, like. Egyptian lover like so that was the West Coast so when when the when they slowed down the BPM and they, you know boys in the hood I knew right then that when I saw the white kids singing boys in the hood it was a rap that was a rap dude so you think are you saying that NWA was the for for me in my era and and and, and yeah that <laughs> Why are you making that face? No, I'm, just, I'm just asking. He's yeah. raising his eyebrows like. No, I mean, we, we like wrong. the Miami and bass. You know, no, California not. always liked up tempo. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's a wrong answer, but he like he backed it up by saying that's his era. But yeah, you're I, not older. I, when you when you when you when you in the in the entire spectrum of hip hop, when you look at who took it from being just right. some backyard stuff to highly commercial, it's undoubtedly Run DMC. Yeah, Run DMC yeah. for sure. Yeah. I mean, they got they got sponsored by right. once they got sponsored by Adidas. 
and you got they're they're rocking an arena with a hundred thousand right. people, and he says everybody in here take off your Adidas and hold it up, and the whole crowd does. Yeah, that. yeah. That's how they got the That's contract. So sick. He told the guy from Adidas was there. Right. Because they had made my Adidas, and Run said he took off his Adidas and held it up. He said, everybody take off your Adidas and hold the whole right. arena did it. And from there, it was Run DMC. Right. Just they they went they took hip hop commercial. They Dad, didn't, didn't you meet Run DMC? They performed at the usual. They, they really? Yeah, they performed oh, at the usual with with uh, Jam Master J. Was it, so this was was this on the downside of their career? This or? is when yeah 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 this is when um, yeah it was like ninety three ninety four when yeah. they performed there. What, what song but was you it? know what, man? For for me as a DJ, because I started off playing dance music, which is what people call freestyle or electro, and then it, 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 it for That's me. Sunshine's and then it, and then it converted into hip hop because of you know like uh, rocket and then you know for hip hop for me it was like uh, the Fat Boys, Houdini, yeah. Run DMC, uh, LL Cool J, uh, the Beastie Boys. So that was around all that same time. But when I saw when I heard Boys in the Hood, that was some other next level ish. Yeah, I was in college. Yeah. But surprisingly, uh, Boys in the Hood is not like that's what's your tell tell the people what's your favorite hip hop track. My favorite hip hop track is uh, is a is an album cut from Biggie Smalls, uh, Machine Gun Funk. Yeah, Machine but Gun. it's kind of hard to say my favorite because I have I, so many. I was gonna say you really have a favorite. So you but I, I mean, I mean, from him. But for him, for, I mean, I love Tribe is my favorite. Yeah. Uh, Aren't you always right? Yeah, there's, 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 there's a lot. There's a EPMD. There's a Wu Tang. Yeah, even with artists, I think when somebody says, "Which who's your favorite top five? If you ask me today, and I'll give you my favorite top five. Next week it'll be different. Yeah, it's all on what I'm listening to. And, and I feel like it's all about your mood, like what mm-hmm. mood you're in, what state of mind. Well, you're see in. when. It's kind of crazy because when I met Tay, I was at a, uh, at a crossing road, right? I was coming from doing the car shows, uh, doing high school dances, um, working the street team with Hot 97, and then actually moving to um, Wild uh, 107. Uh, and again, I was playing the clubs. I was doing college radio. So when I met Uncle Tay, him and his boys were throwing the biggest hip-hop party, and that was a big 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 stepping stone for me because at that same time i was coming from the college radio going into commercial radio market number four mixer and then i was starting to make my mark as a as a a, a hip-hop dj in san jose because at that time i'm not going to lie to you guys they were scared of black people they were scared of black men period and it was just it was I, I sometimes want to cry because it, now where it's at now before, I would tell these guys these stories that I would go in and I'll scratch and the owner would yell at me because he didn't want that. And I finally had to confront him. It's because of black people, you know? And I used to get Latinos would look at me like, man, what's wrong with this guy? Because they didn't know how to box me in because I was very urban, you know? And I just hung out with African Americans. I grew up with black folks. That's who I DJ at all the black clubs. I DJ that's where I cut my teeth at. That's why when you see me moving is it, it, that's my my that's my, fa- my that's my foundation. It's black. And Latinos Soul. failed to realize that it was Africans that created our salsa and our merengue and our cumbias oh, yeah. and our music and so we have to give big ups to all those all those people and black folks for giving us our culture because really all of us non-black folks we we hopefully embrace your culture respect your culture but some people try to make it theirs which is not okay but i like that as you know latinos as a latino as a dj that you i feel in my opinion respect the black culture and all of its artists well they open their 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 hearts, you know, they, you know, they, they tested something me. something about her being racist. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. You gotta stop telling people But you know what, man? It was so great to play it. At, you know, like, when I would go play at these uh, all-black parties, I'd bring them my Latin friends, and they'll be scared. And I could see it in their face. I go, why are you fucking scared? They're folks. They're like us. But once they saw me in action, they're like, now I get it why you're here. Because I would go to these other venues, and they didn't have that same feeling at a party. And you know, you know what? I have to say, I'm sure Elias would agree with me. He He's not here right now because his girlfriend is, it's her birthday too. So he's going to be here a little bit later. But we're so glad that we grew up with you as a DJ because, and that you were fully invested in the black community because we got to grow up with the hyphy movement. So <laughs> fun fact, my dad kept me and Elias out of school one day. I don't think my mom knew until recently. And uh, he took us to another school and Mr. Fab was performing. 
<laughs> so we went to a Mr. Fab concert at a high school. And he took Elias and Ash to a nightclub to see. Yeah, uh, he took uh, my brother and my cousin to see Andre Nicotina. Uh, we got to yeah, party and yeah, right. dances and EPA. Knows. <laughs> Sometimes a motherfucker gotta go to a Nicotina concert. It shit happens. But yeah. you know what's so great, man? When, when Hassan left San Jose and then the Flag Brothers left around the same time, it left a big void. And I luckily I was blessed to have like Andre Barfield from the Booty Crack, Barefield, Barefield. Oh. and he he had a you whole different so movement like ghetto shit, amazing. and it was so dope. And then Tay and and Anthony and Maurice doing uh, Club Flavor. I also got a chance to play at like at uh, Ola's, which is the African club. That's what you were doing. So you were doing Booty Crack and Club Flavor. Yeah, right? yeah. Right in the middle of all that. So it was just so I I remember one time I walked in into the club and my homie like man they fear you like us, <laughs> and I was like I didn't I didn't understand that you know what I mean but I. What's that mean? Because I would walk in and all the DJs would be all to themselves. They don't want to talk to me. But I walked in with my like I belong there, right? And they, you know, of course, it took Reese me a while. That shit. Yeah. I, I was, you know, That's I would nice little, by, little by little, I was chipping was away. I was chipping away, chipping away. So they'll let me play hip hop, and you know, they would say, "Okay, we only let you do ten minutes." And then the ten minutes turned into fifteen minutes, and then the fifteen minutes turned into half hour sets, and then it turned into one hour. And eventually, I had to tell my boys, "I'm out of here. I got to do my own thing now." You know, because I already broke the door down to, and other club owners wanted to hire me because they wanted to hear that sound. That's and, what I yeah, and it's kind of, I, I have a, this is sad. I remember one time, uh, and I share this with Tay, when I was sitting down and when I was up and coming, I would look at Hassan and I go, man, you, how come you're not playing at the clubs? Dude, dude, this guy, he's incredible, bro. He's incredible. He did he did all the DMC battles. He, he battled Cuba. He, I mean, this guy's an amazing DJ. And I would ask him, how come you don't play at these clubs that I was going to? And he, and he pointed his color skin. And I didn't understand that because I'm like, you know, I, I don't look at Tay as black. I look at him, he's my brother. He's my friend, you know. And he goes, you have you have a better chance than me. And he goes, I'm happy that you're here doing your thing. So, And it kind of like daunted me. And then I started realizing now, and I would ask Tay these questions. How come brothers would do parties at San Jose State Student Union? Why do they have to rent a hotel to throw an event? Why do they? And it's because of they wouldn't they didn't they were scared they wouldn't let us the in the door you know no and problems. i i i was able to i bring that together you know and it's just a it's a it's been an amazing journey and what's amazing is that it comes full circle because you are the official dj for San Jose state football and you just welcomed back the students to campus since the pandemic yeah uh, like a couple days ago so that that's awesome that you went from the radio and then you know parties like you just mentioned and now you're the official dj hey <laughs> <laughs> no i i had an amazing uh journey uh, the, after when I can I, I share this with you guys when, when mom passed away uh, I finally realized that why I didn't go the route I wanted to go you know um, I didn't know that I was going to be married and have kids that wasn't in my plan yeah. but you know gosh took me a different direction and I am super happy you know because I wouldn't I want to have you guys, you know. Well, word on the street is right. you got mom because you were spinning <laughs> yeah. hip hop so well. Here she in took San a, she took advantage of me because I was high and drunk, oh. and I was scared. Did you hear that, Gabriel? Your damn seduced me. The selling point for me would have been that you had Biggie sign a, a Biggie record, and you guys. San Jose at, in the '90s, take can, you can co-sign, right? Wasn't it? It was kind of cool, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Especially with the different. college radio, yeah. man, and then we had the, so much college radio, and so many people artists came through here. Yeah. It was, big it, even even San Jose State's radio station was popping. Yeah, I used you to know, do Project Sounds. Was hot. My my uh, on a Friday, in Brooklyn, like something like today, right? I would I would have DJ at junior high lunchtime, then walk across the street, set up DJ for lunch, and then after that, come home, rest, chill, go do a high school dance, pack up my stuff, come home, drop it off, go to a club. It would be like back then it would be like um, Club Oz. Uncle Albert owned that. And then right after the club, I'll leave there, and I always brought my turntables with me because my homie Carl, my best friend, is like, dude, just carry them shits everywhere with you. And he said he was right. He was right. Because just me carrying my two turntables, my little crates of records got me into places that I would never have gotten into. And, I, and I, because I love hip hop so much, I would go to KSJS and I knocked on their doors. And thank God there were two brothers. 
Who was it? It was Silk and uh, my boy uh, George Headley and, and and this other cat named George Sue and and they opened to like you want to play for us? I'm like yeah. You know, back then I was crazy too. We were always smoking weed, so you know I got them all stoned. And I go, "You're, you're gonna plug in?" I go, "Yeah." And I go, and I go, "Let me, let me get down." And then I, I did the radio for 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 a while till I got into um, to wild. And what a blessing! Our lives are still kind of like that. Uh, Pre-pandemic, you were DJing like Thursday through Sunday, yeah. and you would DJ like two or three gigs in one day. And me and mom really enjoyed that shopping money. Uh, but now that things are opening back up again, you were very blessed with all your yeah. private events, and you do everything from a bar mitzvah to a funeral. I, I just, you know, I I love DJing, and I for me it's it's about uh, especially when I do weddings, it's a more of a spiritual thing because you're asking me to DJ one of the most, I mean, it's a very important day in your lives, right? So I take that to heart, and I and I try to uh, play, you know, from the heart and give them. M- my all you know and i think that um it, it works out and they, they feel the love you know because music is very powerful and this is why you're gonna dj my wedding and then when we do the father and daughter dance you're gonna wear a headset like janet jackson right. so that you can MC my wedding <laughs> at the same time because i don't think i'd be able to choose who uh, would dj my oh wedding. my god I, that's crazy i, I can tell when it's you i can tell when it's not you tay's going tay's yeah, gonna be on the mic how do you wedding. know you were even in that's what I'm saying. I'm not going. No, I'm Tay's going. going. He's like, that's so the roadie right there. I got a question real quick. So, like, I grew up, I grew up, like, you know, a little ghetto-ass kid, <laughs> right? Like, this into, like, nothing but, like, gangster rap, you know, right. like, in the 90s, right? Right, right. So, to me, you know, I'm naive. So, hip-hop, to me, was always East Coast. It was, to me. Okay. Just, okay. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. hip-hop, yeah. it's like, hey, like, oh, there's such thing as West Coast hip-hop. I'm like, no, there's not. Dude, there's only gangster rap. That's how we do okay. it. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. So, what is the difference in your guys' like, eyes or in your guys' ears, hip-hop and rap? So Is there was, a difference? Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. okay. Speak Thank on you. It. Please. I mean, the, I think the, the latest explanation or, or display that we've seen was the, uh, I don't know if you guys saw it, but Dipset versus the Locks on the Versus. Hip hop, I mean, uh, MCs versus versus rappers. You know, uh, if you listen to Karis One or if you like Karis One, he'll yeah. tell you hip hop is something you, is 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 what you live. Rapping is something you do. And then there, you know, there's different type of rappers. There's an MC and there's a rapper. MCs are 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 are, are uh, Rakim, Karis One, right. Black Thought, Razkaz. Yeah, ra- oh Razkaz. He's a hip hop artist. Rappers? Rap. Migos. Uh, uh, oh, uh, Nelly's a rapper, right? Um, uh, I'm trying to think. Who else so is like, so like, is Ice Cube? Is he a He's rapper? An MC. He's an MC. MC. What Even makes him an MC versus very, a rapper? Very, very lyrical and uh, and the way he writes, the way he flips his words. It's, it's not as simplified. So we can't do the Tupac versus Biggie argument no more. Those are two MCs. Those, they're MCs. They're both, they're both MCs. MCs. Yeah. They just have different styles. Biggie, yeah. Biggie was heavily, heavily influenced by West Coast. He took a piece of West Coast and made it. He took that gangster element. And, and, and put it on a, on a, on a, on an East Coast beat. That's all he did. Hey, and and, and that's been explained before. They've said that before. He's he's yeah. influenced by. He took a little of that grime, and he, and, he, and he brought it out there. And uh, it's it's it is. It's almost gangster rap. If you change his beats to maybe some put some zap or some parliament behind it, he's yeah. gangster rapping. Hey, gangster and rapping. the thing is too, like we, here in the West Coast, we we, we come from a big call. Cul- car culture right yes. so our slaps you you feel the bass you know mm-hmm. we, we love funk that that's cholos asians why i knew dirty ass white boys they hear more <laughs> bounce and like they're popping over there I knew this, he, he would hear more bounce and he's you know west coast is more fun we and, and we like bass right like in the fun. east coast they like their kicks kicks a little bit harder uh more because they're on the subways they're hearing in the headphones. walkman headphones and they like their they bass too. They like funk, but their funk Walkman. is a little bit more is a little bit Did different from that? ours. Yeah, he was gonna that. say. Walkman. So if you, you think about it, West Coast gangster rap is really. You heard, you heard the message, right? Yeah. From from Mel, mm-hmm. uh, Grandmaster Fights yeah. and Fear. That's West Coast. That style. But it's they were from the East Coast, right? Yeah. So they we took that and we make it our own, and then the whole pimp it's shit. Just the, it's know, t- it's, it's Oakland, it, man. There still are. You know, lyricists that are gangster rappers. You know, right. Snoop's, Snoop's, Snoop's a good lyricist. lyricist. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, I. So the mischief, man. All of them. I mean, Cube was gangster. Snoop was gangster. You know, Dub C is gangster. Uh, uh, um, 
What's my man was in was in the East Siders with Snoop? The two dudes, Goldie and uh, oh, uh, um, Big Trey D. Trey D. Trey D. Is very lyrical. When you listen to this, I'm like, damn, this dude is spit. Uh, what was that guy that called Killigang? Killigang? Did he have the the go to West the uh, West C? Yeah, yeah, yeah. MC. yeah, yeah. Very oh, yeah. Dude, those, those are King MCs. King T. Oh, I'm bad with names. Those are MCs. Rappers are, are a no. little more watered down. I won't, I won't say commercial because Heavy D was very commercial. But he's he's a he's a he's a beast on the mic. When you get heavy D in front, of, when you get listening to some heavy D, it's like, damn, this dude, he took time to write that. You know, it's not simple. It's not as simple as just making the two words at the rhyme. At the See, and that's rhyme. what I loved about our era. And I know that I mean, okay, as a DJ, you gotta accept everything. I mean, I understand how everything, uh, the the sound changes. You know, the different eras. But in 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 our era, um, you can tell. This is what I miss. If I got a record from New York, it sound like New York. Yes. If I got a record that came from Seattle, it sound like Seattle. If it came from Texas, Atlanta, or you know Los Angeles, like the region. barrier. So these regional sounds were made it special. Then I can be like, if I'm rocking some West Coast gangster shit, then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna play some Chicago shit. I can be able to go into playing Common, uh, Twista, right? Oh, you want to? Oh, you want to? Uh, you want to hear some um, Dirty South gangster shit? I'm gonna go into Ghetto Boys. But now today, and, and Snoop talked about it. We didn't teach the young, the, the next generation about being original. So now you got New York guys sounding from Atlanta. You guys got people from you know uh, Italy sounding like from. So there's no, it's not original anymore, you know. But again, you have to look at your sources because that's I'm talking about radio, right? If you, now the you're yeah, you now if you're digital digging. Like if you're in uh, Mixcloud or you're going into uh, SoundCloud Bandcamp. or Bandcamp, you can find the true underground hip hop artist. So it's it's presented and packaged a different way, you know. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's different. It's changed a lot. The 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 internet killed a lot of it. It made it equal for everybody, but it also brought out a lot of mediocre. So you have to yeah. go through a lot of garbage to get to the the good stuff. You know. Is that? Does that? I don't know if I answered your question. You see, I mean, no, you got to get the difference. It makes a lot hip hop. It actually confuses me a lot more. Yeah. But I get it though. You know what I mean? Okay. Let me, let me, hip hop is the culture. No, I get that. Yeah. So um, hip hop is gonna have more lyrics into it, right? Well, I mean, I'm not gonna say Nelly is in hip hop. He is hip hop. He's just he's just a rapper. He's not that lyrical MC. You know, there are different types of rappers. You know, or MCs that all fits under hip hop. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let me ask you something so so like, all hip -hop. so like to me, like when you said Seattle, first thing pop is uh, so mix a lot, right. right? Yeah. Is that a rapper or is because because what he talks about I is would, a posse on Broadway, yeah, buttermilk he's, biscuits, he's stuff not, like that, right? Square dance. Look this way. How complex is, is are his lyrics to you? Would exactly, you, they're not. Exactly. So, so he, he kind of shades more to that rap side. Rap but side. He knows that. Right. So I think what we need to do here is create a PowerPoint <laughs> and list every artist. We won't let you know how to create Exactly. Uh, <laughs> I do not make a PowerPoint, just not as organized as tape. It's um, <laughs> it's. It, you it know, it's just hip hop, or like I said, it's the culture. And when it comes down to rapping, that's the thing they do. But MCs and rappers are kind of two different categories. Well, I get you know, that now. It's, yeah. just, it's just, you know, rappers, I mean, MCs just put way more into Like, if you listen to, there was a great interview with Rakim. He he grew up playing the jazz, uh, which he's considered the, the MC god. He is considered the greatest on. rapper of all time. Mm -hmm. And he grew up playing jazz. His parents, his mother sang opera. His his mom, his father was in a band, so he he understands music structure, and he I remember seeing him and him say, when he rhymes, he rhymes like a jazz artist. He rhymes like Coltrane. That's John Coltrane. That's who his style is based on. He said because I would try to fit as many words as I could, in between, in this certain count. You know, eight count, four count, bars and bars, four count, eight count. He said I fit as many words as I could, in there. But I would, you know, like when you hear a, a, a when you hear a, a, a jazz person solo, it's bop, 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 bop. that's how he raps. He rides the beat. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He, he, he makes himself one with the beat. He rides the beat, and he makes it more complex than just um, C J Run, C J. You know, he makes it more simple than A B C D. It's not that simple. His stuff is really lyrical, and the stuff he's talking about, you really have to rewind and say, damn, what did he just say? If you can make me rewind your shit. You're an MC. I I, I had a, a conversation with King Tech of the world famous uh, wake, up wake Up Show, and I asked him. I go, I go Tech. What what's your thoughts on the music? This is like an 06. He goes, you know what, uh, Reese. He goes, you know, uh, the birth was, you know, um, 
from the seventies, right? We're infants. And then when uh, you know, Sugar Hill Gang came out in the eighties, you know, we were in elementary school. And then he was talking about, you know, De La Soul and all them, you know. So we had to take you know, Run D M C was was uh high school, you know, junior high high school. And yeah. then we go into like now we're going into college because you had, you know, Public Enemy, you had De La Soul Tribe, you had, you know, Gangstar. Then, you it know, got a little more complex. Yeah, it, then, it, then, it, then you had Chicago sound. So he goes, now, Reese, he goes, it, it, it kind of got dumbified. I go, what do you mean? He goes, now it's more nursery rhyme. And I never thought about it. And I go, what are you talking about? He goes, snap your finger, do you say? It's like... Oh, McDonald had a fun E-I-E And the beats like That's why What's going to happen with trap rap and all that shit Is going to die because It's saturated now It's so much of that Like I get people send me music and I tell them Listen I'm going to give you my honest opinion But you cannot get mad I look because I'm coming from the club I want records that are going to make the females dance and the and the guy spend money. You hear that, so the first record that comes out is. I was looking. I was looking. And you know, mumbling. I go. That's not gonna work for my dance floor. But him and his three little stone friends in the corner, like, oh, with little fucking. Quick, 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 quick. Oh, that's the shit, man. I'm like, dude, that's fucking garbage. Your vocals are high. You didn't master it. Where's the compression? And when you start breaking it down like that. You're like, man, you got to go back and you got to, uh, are you making the records for the street or <laughs> you're making the records to be played on the radio or in the club? And everything starts at the club. And people swear this is the nicest guy they've ever but, met. But that's why I, I kind of <laughs> like, I don't like talking about music with normal people because I just, I, you know, who am I to tell you that what's good or not? But I know what yeah, I, I like. I you Eddie when I said Migos was like, eh. <laughs> what? But you know what? <laughs> You know, it's funny, though. I just heard... Uh, I, I like your looking, vest. I've I, I heard people say Migos. They like Migos, and they're pretty good. And I was just like, yo, I mean, to each their own. But for me, it's just... Nah, I can't Brian. If you can't make me sit up and listen, and All Migos, right. I, I can't even... You know, if you were to ask me to... If you put a gun to my mama's head and say, Dante, recite a Migos song, Mama, you dead. <laughs> you dead, because I, I do not know it. one can't song right by the Migos. And that's... I mean, that's just me. And, you know and I don't want to wait. I don't want to seem like I'm just a purist and fuck all the new guys. No, because there's some new guys out that are monsters. Right. You know, Logic is a monster. Lo- monster. You know, Token is a monster. Kendrick is a monster. J. Cole is a beast. These yeah. dudes are, they will tear you up. You know what's funny? And to be honest with you, y'all can laugh if you want to. Drake got bars. I love Drake. I love Drake. Drake, I love Drake he, owns you know, he, 2010 he, he, and he up. He's a new light skin guy. But he yeah, got Drake, bars. Drake's on fire. He you can't bars. take that from him. I, I can't take that from him. He's on everybody's track. I like his music. Mm-hmm. I like his music. But see, that's know? what sucks when you talk to like DJs or people like into music about music. Because sometimes when you hear their opinions, <laughs> and, you know, like, I get it. Though, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I grew up with like funk. Yeah. Yeah. Old. You guys hear me when I put like my yeah. old school funk and yeah. stuff like that and oldies. You know, that's the chorus, right? My culture. West Coast. Yeah. But. Now that I'm older, past about the past five years, I've actually got into like hip hop, hip hop. Uh-huh. Yeah. Where I'm like, some oh, boom bap. Yeah, I'm like, the who's boom bap. Who's yeah. that? Who's that? Uh-huh. And I'm like, damn, I like this. And look, he matured, and that's what I matured. Yeah, that's that, and that's the you know that's that's kind of like hip hop. You listen to. You Dude, know, Tay likes Metallica. I listen to Metallica. I love Metallica. I'm, I'm into thrash. You just listen to, I mean, hip, it's just. I like country me, music always, too. It's, it's, it's crazy. Been, uh, lyrical content. You know, I mean, What's up, a lot of Torres? people sleep on uh, Black Thought from yeah. the Roots. And, and to me, convenient. he's top five, dead or alive. He will slaughter somebody. There's not too many people who can get with him on a microphone, dude. He's just, he's so incredible and intelligent. It's like mind blowing. But people just see the roots mm-hmm. and they see Quest Love with the big afro. You know, the roots make some cool stuff, but when you d- dive into their music, Black Thought is a monster, dude. You know what sucks for scary. me being his, uh, being his daughter is that I can't really relate to other people my age in regards to music because my <laughs> vast knowledge of music exceeds that of like us, our age times three because we're listening to stuff that like my grandparents grew up listening to that type of thing uh and what also sucks about being brother reese's daughter is i hear all the cool shit that he did 
way back when he was younger than I was, or even when I was too young for him to sneak me into somewhere, which he has done. Sorry, but uh, my, oh, thanks, bro. <laughs> my most this is going to jail. Some parenting, huh? My most favorite story that I've ever heard of you, Dad. What? And I hope you do this on Monday. And if you don't, you're blacklisted. Um, when you brought out the cowbell uh -huh. at Motown yeah, Monday. That was cool. Bro. That was fun. I, like, but he, I tell people, like, that's, like, one of the coolest fucking stories I, ever, <laughs> I have he, of you. And I always tell people, I'm like, I just was telling Josh in the car last week, can you believe in the middle of Motown Monday, my dad brings out a cowbell and, and is going, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Like, that, to me, is mind-blowing. I wish someone had it on video. So now you got to replicate that in my life. That, that's one of those things. That's one of those things um, uh, yes, I don't have it. where I'm glad you didn't do it a lot, Reese. Yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those Because it was so dope. And, that and, uh, is Because if you would have done it again, then it's been like, oh, he does that okay, shit all Okay, don't go on Monday because he has to do it again on Monday. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I mean, so, you know, but I, I, I would say you could do it. I would say, you know, t t you're giving away the, the surprise. But yeah, I would say, see, take I, it on Monday sorry, because no, I know Mal would like it. Yeah. Like it's just like to do something different because no, you know that. What made you do that? Well, That's you know why? Crazy. Because I was playing with Shea Butter and uh, Shea CMC, Corey, a uh, Corey, Corey and DJ. and yeah, th those guys are phenomenal DJs. Cutso was there, oh, another he's favorite, my DJ. favorite DJ. So Don't like, and these guys were like technically gifted, and they got oh, great man. song selections. They're, they're just like, I, they're really and they're really cool guys. So I'm like, I gotta they're up so one cool. on these fuckers. I gotta show them the old <laughs> man can still yeah, do it. <laughs> Jokes about we used to always me and we used to always make jokes about you know let's do a cowbell remix a yeah. cowbell this a cowbell that just making jokes and he took it that day and I remember I was I can't remember where I was and uh, D Struck comes up and he taps me on the shoulder and he goes hey I was like yeah what's up man he goes hey man I heard uh, did Reese really pull out a cowbell I was like yeah he did man he goes that's my dude shout out to Destruct Destruct man, man. Dude. he's at Serato yeah, yeah he's it was yeah. one of those it's a unique thing you know it's one of those it's one of those things you can't do all the time but it was it was cool yeah man it was cool Tay and I uh I, I love this guy so much. He's like my brother, man. We we've been through a lot of stuff together, and we've done a lot of memorable events. Um, and just in, I I always tell Tay this: go. If it wasn't for you, man, my pandemic would have been. It would have been a lot different, man. So I thank you, Tay, for being there for not me, but just my family as well, man. And uh, us getting together to do Soul Parlor, because a lot of you guys uh, know that we do Soul Parlor. Well, Tay used. To, so Tay and I were going around in the early nine, in the mid nineties, and then we broke up. And he went to he he got some broad <laughs> pregnant, had a chick, and he moved to San Diego. Had a chick. It, it, though you had a baby. Okay. Yeah, you got a chick, and you got her pregnant, okay. and you moved to San Diego. Oh, Me and Norma had a kid. English is his second language. And then uh, so I'll then we uh, um, we hooked like up that. again. What two, twenty? Uh, two thousand ten. Two thousand ten through uh, uh, we that were, radio station that we were doing, doing yeah, online doing radio station, and uh, it's like we haven't. Mrs. B is crazy. So Tay used to do uh, Mrs. Tay's Soul Shack, and I used to listen to it. And my, so when it comes to soul music and, and like neo soul R&B, this guy right here is the sorry sister, but this is the motherfucking encyclopedia right here. <laughs> I'm co-signing. A lot of you guys ask me where you get your music, and Tay's my dealer. And uh, Tay's the plug, dad. We say the plug now. I'm a, I get it, I, look, I get it from my dad. We don't say dealer these days. It's yeah. the plug. Yeah. I, get it, I, get it, I get it from my dad. So you got that from Pop. So, yes. you know, so your your influences it came from your dad, huh? Directly. That's yeah. crazy. So, like, for Hands down. music was always around in your home, yeah, then, huh? Always. Yeah. He always played, uh, he was always playing music, whether it was mowing the lawn or washing the car. Even, you know, if we Saturday mornings, Sunday mornings, he's got the stereo on blast. He's, he's playing music. Right. That's, it was normal. Is Mrs. Scott the same way when no. she's cooking? Not at all. No? Oh, Not really? It's quiet? Not at all. Well, she probably, yeah. she yeah. probably yeah. never turned but on the But Tay's the dude that, like, he knows when the shit's coming out before the <laughs> artist knows. You know, like, he knows that... <laughs> He Not knows even the underground either. Twinkies are coming out. He knows. He knows the <laughs> shows, the movies, so, yeah. the it's music. Just, I just, I, the music is one of the things that just, it just has always stuck with me. Yeah. I was and a he, kid. From his father. Yeah. yeah. See, see, I got it from my dad. Because I, mean, I would ask Tay, like, over here, certain records, like Bill Withers. A lot of you guys don't know that Mr. Scott, uh, Dante's dad, was in the military. And guess who was his, his homie? His in the shipmate. <laughs> yeah. And just to add to that. Bill story, Withers. Bill I saw the picture. Wow. <laughs> and to add to that, there's a picture of our, Bill Withers holding her. 
our father daughter dance is gonna be a lovely day by bill withers that's it's our, I my dad want, well one day when i get married that's gonna be our song our father daughter yeah, dance. my dad said he had no idea he didn't know that he could sing like that no bill didn't talk they they're the ones who gave him the nickname still bill really he didn't talk he didn't talk <laughs> Wow. He would just chill. He was so quiet. They'd take him to parties. He'd just sit in the corner. So he went from and, quiet to singing? And he, he sang by default because he was doing something for somebody else. And somebody asked him to sing, and he did in the studio, and they liked it. And uh, That's crazy. And my dad came home and was like, I need it. my mom said, Still building a made an album. And it was it, it was on from there. <laughs> well, yo, man, I, I want to segue into uh, what what is Chef doing over there? All right, let me put you the camera. You made some more? Chef, what are, you, what are you doing, man? Let's eat. Who's that over there with him? That's what I'm doing. Let me move the camera over there, guys. Let me adjust the camera. Um, so what I got here, so you guys all know these meals are like meals on the go. It's going to be less than 20, 30 minutes, right? Um, if you're cooking for this much, it's not going to be. But like I showed you all earlier, we had the popcorn chicken that we're actually going to be using for the orange chicken. We got the sauces already made. So, you, you know, you're done doing the kids' practice. It's like six o'clock. You're like, what am I gonna do for dinner? Go to the grocery store, plan out your meals. Get popcorn chicken. It could be the Chinese chicken, right? You get the veggies. They take really quick to cut. You got a really nice hot pan. It's gonna cook in about five to seven minutes. I'm not even joking. What is this? Any? I'm sorry. Oh, this is gonna be stir fried vegetables. Okay. I like oh, a lot of love, and I like my vegetables to be al dente, mm -hmm. but they got a little texture in them. Not, they're not gonna be mushy. I like that. You take all the nutri nutri nutrients out, and on top of that, they just like. Ugh. Right, baby English food. wasn't Eddie's worst language either. It wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so what, do you, what do you use to season the so veggies? So what I like to do is um, we actually have our stir fry sauce, which is literally it says in the bottle, stir fry sauce. All right. It's easy. It's quick. It's going to be like, hey, I'm on the go. I can't. I had no time to make my sauce. I'm just going to go like this. Let's go like this. Right. So and we got. this disclaimer, right, Eddie? Huh? Disclaimer, like if people still want to hire you for catering, go ahead. I'll hold me. Yeah, I usually, you'd, I you'll never find me doing you know stuff like that. I That's make all my sauces, know. all my dressing, stuff like that. But for this, just because of like the show on the go, right? No, I I like I like this concept because we need shortcuts. As a parents, we we don't we don't have time exactly. to be prepping and like you cook. Uh, you guys are I, I watch. I, 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 that I, whole parent thing I see. failed. No, so, I'm um, I watch. You did, and I was the one cooking meals. Where was Eddie? Ten years ago. So, we got it all ready. Okay. So, what I like to do, they're nice and al dente, right? Uh huh. They still got a little bit of a touch to them. Uh huh. Um, get the stir fry sauce, right? Mm. And we're going to go and just going to. Ay, like, papa. Woo! And then smells right behind on you. Ooh! He's doing awesome. tricks right. and everything. <laughs> all right. So, we let that cook for a little bit, and then we're going to just move it around. Be patient when you're at home cooking. People always like to shake the pan, shake the pan. You're not letting things cook that way. When you do that, it's all steaming, you know what I'm saying? You hear that, Norma? So we got to get the love up in there. Yeah, right? I like Norma that. Norma has that bad habit. We like taking our time. There you go, babe. You're great at that blue apron. Oh, my God. Hey, smells well, great already, blue right? Apron, uh, meals, she killed it. Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> so we go there. I like to coat them, mix them around. Okay. Coat it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. It looks like a. Is my dad on right there? Ooh. Ooh. So Ooh. naughty. And one thing I like to do just for a little bit of spice and everything nice uh -huh. is a little chili garlic sauce, right? Oh. Yeah, that's the best one. What brand yeah. is that? The only uh, I'm not going to say the brand on air, but I it's. I thought uh, it was ours. Chili garlic sauce? Oh, no, it's not ours. Okay. But like, I'm going to give this a little bit of love, right? And that's sweet like people think it's only spicy it's kind of sweet it I gives a lot it. of flavor right it tastes great on your fur oh what the fur what the fur what's your favorite chinese restaurant the fuck what uh, uh fuki oh fuki yeah it's like a fusion right yeah, it's a fusion yeah they have they have a little Greece. bit of everything remember that side? what's up bro welcome so like let me try that. It's just a vegetable, right? Oh, I love it. Still got a crunch to it. What, not overcooked. What, what vegetables does he have in there, Reese? Huh? What is it? What is what vegetables Broccoli, was it? Broccoli. Broccoli. Cauliflower. cauliflower green beans. Mushrooms. And mushrooms. Is there an onion? Nope. Can we put a steak in there? No. <laughs> Chef, that tastes really good. good. It's just vegetables, right? And I like it that you it's not overly steaks? cooked. Exactly. Ready? It's got a bite to it. We're not gonna be munching on, you know, mush. Yeah. So it's gonna have a bite. 
you can have a little bit of texture to it right and this is the trick when you're using this thing two spatulas Ooh. right Maliachi the techniques in how the black Latinos, man, from the oldest San Ho. Great jacket. Looks great. There we go. Ooh. Black Latinos in the house, baby. They really and I'd like to put a little bit of extra sauce princesses. on it. Oh. Right. Nice. And a whoop. Wow. wow. This is like vegetables, bro. Damn. You're gonna eat wow. You guys gonna make me, you make me eat bushes? Good. Yes. Eddie, you ain't got a steak over there? No, no steak today. So <laughs> bushes. <laughs> you Cookie bushes. Can we, can we put yeah. some uh, huh? hamburger or something on it? Uh, we'll just wait a little bit. All right. Um, uh, let me put the. Should I put the camera back on on the grill again or? No, right. Daisy. no, no, don't worry about it. Right. Excuse our top flights. So I'm gonna start getting the. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Brooke, let me get the fried rice. Talk about what we made for. Uh, yeah, V, what you got? V, did you make something special for today? I did. Do you, do you have to get it out of the refrigerator or you want to Look wait? Look at her face. Can you zoom in on her face? She is keeping a dirty secret. No, we can't. Oh, I love <laughs> dirty secrets. <laughs> You're a dirty boy. Thank Ooh. you. Oh, I see all the friends and family in here. I gotta go. No, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. We have some um, now. Well, you guys uh, I'm, I'm going to punish Norman tonight. Wait, while well, you guys are here. I'm going to take something? a little blue pill. I need Advil. Oh. For the black, for the back. <laughs> it's Advil. Yeah. <laughs> what? So now you guys are talking dirty <laughs> to each other. Yeah. How did you guys meet? What's the story here? Because now you're drunk. drunk. I didn't know what, what I was. Happened. So I, I was the. She was at club. A date rape drug. <laughs> we were doing a club flavor and Norma kept. I never went to club flavor. Getting on Reese in the booth and I said, no, Reese, you gotta get this what? girl out of here. She's yeah. messing up the beat. She just was freaking on Reese. I said, stop it. Get her out of here, Reese. Start. That's how they met. That's not how Reese. Honey. Yeah. Thank you. I was a struggling <laughs> DJ and I was <laughs> shy. Oh God, you like and I said, stop it, Norma. <laughs> and then I met this cougar out. at Planet X and it was Norma. No, 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 no. How I heard it. How I heard it. You made her a mixtape of all her favorite songs. No, I, I and she still has. They lied to you. And, I, and then he, t he called one time and goes, how'd you get my number? He goes, oh, Raquel gave it to me. Goes, Raquel Leon, I love you, Raquel. I said, don't ever call me again. You're not my type. Is Raquel here? <laughs> no. Raquel's in, uh, in, in Sacramento. I see little one. I was mean. Yeah. I was yes. superficial back then. <laughs> and here we are. And you picked Reese, huh? <laughs> no, I was date raped. How, how many years is it going to be? You guys? date raped Reese? Yeah, she did, bro. She I took know, it. I was I scared. That night. I you remember. were scared, really? Yeah, because people kept coming. Reese is scared, scared, scared right now. The girl in the DJ. We room. all belong in an insane <laughs> asylum. Reese is I'm scared. I'm the only sane one here. Oh Not even the dogs are sane. So how long have you, <laughs> how long have you guys been here? It's gonna be 25 years. No, didn't we already say? And, and you weren't. Wait, how long? Oh, it's gonna be 26. 26. Years. Oh my God, they don't even know their own <laughs> anniversary. So romantic. So Reese knows. You guys are grand. I'm like the bitch in the front in the relationship. <laughs> Cause mom is like a dude. He, he just remembers everything. I don't she remember. makes me wear G-strings when I don't want to. I, you so, want to? And she wants me to bend over when I'm DJing so she can see the the the. the, the <laughs> Wait, so where was your guys? And she always tells me, "Let me play with your panty." Line. Don't tell her about <laughs> well, I was like, Norma, the, the kids are here. Was it Chinese food? What? No, El Torito's. Oh. Yeah, so Which when one? I met, uh, when mom and I went on a date, she's like, she was like, she wanted to get rid of me, and she brought uh, Elias. And, I thought he wouldn't like me anymore after this. Because uh, he already had a toddler. Uh, uh, yeah, Elias and, and Norma were fighting was, over the spoon. He was a year. And he was a year old, and he, he just turned a year. So just like CJ, you know how he, he was very temperamental, and then... Um, he grabbed the spoon and he went like this, and I got all the sour cream on me. And guacamole, everything. And guacamole. It was so embarrassing. And you were like, yes. But he kept calling. So it. is that when you fell in love? I fell in love with uh, Elias first. Truth hurts. Okay, look, look. Truth hurts. We're, gonna, we're, we're grown adults here. The first thing when you see your wife, you're like, oh, she's so smart. <laughs> Who said that? I'm oh, just saying. When we know, see normal, we say that, or just in general? In general, like, oh, I like her because she's smart. Yeah, yeah, she's a, she does volunteer work at okay, the, you know, whatever. Okay. No, I looked at normal. I like the way she danced. I'm like, damn, she be good in bed. Because she can oh, groove. Oh, my God. That's what you thought? 
Yes, of wow. course. Cut the music. Stop cooking. No one's eating. We're all throwing It was up. on. <laughs> I didn't know that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> And then after we, you know, hanging out with her, I'm like, yeah, I'm falling in love with her. Uh, <laughs> such a girl. I almost, like, I followed my I'm sorry. I almost threw I'm But sorry. you know what's funny? You say you're all in love, but you're three grand. You guys are three grandkids in, and you're still not married. When's the wedding? Well, Dad has to DJ my wedding, or Zoo. Where's Zoo? Zoo has to DJ my wedding if me and Dad get married. No, we're going to have open tour, because I want Malachi to do a... Uh, uh, the, and Malachi, the, yeah. Malachi. We'll have and a sign up list. Everyone has a set. Sunday, easy like Sunday morning. There I want that vibe. <laughs> Grown folks shit. I want to shake your booty. You know what? No, so normally, yeah, we're exactly not, we're not married per se, but we've been together for so long. and We need to get married. I, I was so embarrassed when we saw Felipe Esparza when he said, you know what? We already have a grandkid. I don't want them to know we're not married. So that's how I feel now. <laughs> and if God comes, he's going to punish me, so I have to marry her. <laughs> and living in San Francisco. So back to V before we're really in Yes, V. Okay, can you talk about the dessert you made for today? I made a very special dessert. Oh yeah, why is it special? Real, can give her. You can just describe it. I mean, not totally, but tell us what it, what you know, what flavor. Yeah, oh, what flavor. The flavor. Yeah. yeah. So I did. It's an, the filling is an Oreo. Oreo Ooh. mousse. Yeah. Ooh. The frosting is also an Oreo whipped frosting. <laughs> Ooh, shit. And the cake itself is also Oreo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So will we get to see this? Can we see yes, it now? Can we course. see it now? Can, I would love to bring it out right okay. now. Yeah, let's okay. Let me go yeah. ahead. Chef Eddie would just make some fried rice. Oh, he made, uh, some more he, fly, he made some more fly lice? Yep. So you guys can take a look at his fried rice while, while I go well, get to the dessert. Thank goodness I don't got to eat bushes. So, Chef, can you Thanks talk about the, the fried rice that you're, you're making for us? <laughs> Eddie, is your mic on? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so for the fried rice, the, uh, the key ingredient is leftover rice, believe it or not. Yeah. Your rice has got to yeah. be chilled when I you're doing that. it, or else it's going to get really, really clumpy and it's going to look all funky. Oh, I'm like a poet, don't even know it. All right. I said that the first episode. That rhyme. Hey, still works though. Um, you're, so you're, like you're a rapper level right now. You're not MC, but you're a rapper level. I'm getting there. You're rapper level. Eddie, and you're cute. Right? Yeah. He's dad's freaky hyena. Did you so, wear your pink thong too? Okay, we're going to get back to the food because you guys are going off, off, off the rails. Um, going off the rails. One thing you want to add to it is make sure that you actually get frozen vegetables at your home, right? You get your peas, your carrots. Throw it in there. Some people like the egg. I don't really like the egg. I like the egg. <gasps> Me too. I like egg. But because the egg is the best. No, because it ends up getting overcooked. It depends. On what? But I like that taste. Though. Mm, now, if you go to a lot of places, the egg has brown on it, and yeah, I like that. My what? chef would just, I, as a chef, I said brown eggs. I'll throw it at somebody. So you end up past corners. Yeah, you know, I, now that you mentioned, I don't like that overcooked egg I, either. I you like feel the me? Crunchy. I really don't like it. But also, I, um, I like I put Chinese sausage in here. Oh. And I also yeah. put shrimp as well. I so what, like what exactly is, is Chinese sausage? Yeah, what exactly like is Chinese sausage? Too. Yeah, Reese, Reese I love Stone. chorizo. Back to Chinese sausage, Big Mama. Ed, oh, what is Chinese sausage? No. Uh, the actual name for it, I, oh, yeah, I don't want to butcher well, it because I can't remember the name of it. That's okay. What is it? Yeah. It's just it's actually a cured dried sausage. Yeah. Okay. So kind of like uh, um, like Spanish style chorizo or like uh, another dry sausage that you might find is it looks like beef jerky to tell you the truth if you were, like kind of look at it. Right. Um, they sell it at all the Asian stores. All right. So, so what was like the first thing you did for this fried rice? Um, heated up the rice, uh -huh. the sausage, so the flavor of the sausage could get in the rice. Okay. Right. Yeah. And you added yeah, we got the frozen mixed vegetables in there, uh -huh. and we did the shrimp in there too. Got the shrimp in there too. And then you added your stir fry sauce. Yes, ma'am. That one I usually just go basic soy sauce, okay. because a lot of other stuff will kind of get overpower everything else that we're gonna be eating today. Just move this. All right. Put this. Put this over there by the coffee. No, this. Wow, that smells incredible. And we gotta put oh, a little me, bit of oh man, onions on there. Ooh. Yeah, I'm gonna, gonna, I'm gonna, gonna yeah, we're gonna go to his house. Do it. You know you're welcome, brother. Thank you, thank you. Bring that up to the camera, Reese. All right. 
The one last thing I'm going to cook, and you guys go ahead and talk, is the orange chicken. Chicken sauce? Uh, that one we actually bought pre bought as well. Oh, really? Just to show everybody, hey, you know what? It's that easy. It's that easy to do. You don't got to go to Panda. You don't got to go anywhere else. Just yeah. save yourself like 60 bucks. Yeah. Uh, and an extra trip. Right? Uh, so now while Eddie is uh, preparing the orange chicken next, we're going to look, look at, at V's Chef V's incredible creation. Uh, and I sure she will not disappoint she hasn't yet everything she's made is just off the off the hook whether it's dessert or not oh my so God. as we mentioned tomorrow is my dad's 50th birthday oh wow and thank you all for being here what you don't know is that we have actually have an audience behind us uh it's all behind of our me, loved ones. <laughs> uh it's oh all of our loved God. ones uh, here to celebrate my dad's 50th birthday. It's a 1200. Birthday, so thank you for being here and celebrating That's this so milestone cool. of a birthday with him. I told thank her you. to do that, eh? <laughs> thank you, host. <laughs> thank you, V. Oh, that my God. So dope. It's a turn to Bring it. You got to bring it in so they can see it in the camera. They can't see it. Oh, you my come God, V. Yeah. You're an artist. Wow. Hey, you guys, big round of applause, por favor. Puta. No se llama Yunko. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's badass. Look at that. Uh, yeah, that's cool or what? I love it. I don't want to eat it now. <laughs> okay, I lie. I I'm a, you have to yeah, eat I lie. <laughs> I want the big, the biggest piece ever. Mm -hmm. Thank you so, so that's much. Why really you like to DJ weddings, right? For the game. Oh man, look oh. at that. Oh, dude, that's sick. <laughs> You're tripping. I'm gonna have one today. Are you going to have one? <laughs> you need to have one, man. Well, does this conclude our show? Yeah, man. Shit, it's, it's 8.30. We're about 20 minutes over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is perfect, man. I want to thank everybody for tuning in, supporting uh, Eagle Crush and Soul Parlor. Um, you know, my soulful reasons on Soulful House Music Lodge, the number one station on Twitch for hey. house music. And, and Brooklyn's Way Charity last <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> yeah, I want to thank yeah, everybody thank for participating. Shout out to everybody online. Check it out. Right. Yeah. Chat Chamora. Thank you to everybody on the chat, man. Yeah, and thank Jeff you to all my DJ. friends and family here that we're going to have a, a delicious dinner. Soul Rock. Soul Rock. What's up? Hey, why are you a cabron? He's on the he chat. Cerote <laughs> Um I want to thank <laughs> Chef Eddie, Eddie and Chef V for always, uh, you know, just being there for us and making these delicious food. And so next week you're going to make some calls and we'll have a guest? He actually, yes. So in Thank September you. we have... The one and only Scotty Fox. Yay! Fun fact about Scotty September Fox: He second. named his daughter after me. Her name's Brooklyn too. Brooklyn, you're full of it. We're Thank dope. you. He, told he me named that. her after the city. Yeah. <laughs> oh. You're just you jealous because you your name is just Dante. Uh, it's in the dictionary. <laughs> is it Dante? Dante. Brooklyn's in the dictionary. As a city. New York. Bro. I'm as a person. Okay. I'm as a person. Well, thank but you, everyone, I, for tuning yeah, in. Yeah, thank you for tuning in. We're, we're ready to party, man, and eat and celebrate. And uh, tomorrow night, if you guys are in the South Bay, we're having a big party at Branham Lounge, 21 and over. And what you got to show proof of uh, vaccination. What day is it? Yeah, I mean, is it Friday, Saturday, Sunday? It's Saturday, tomorrow, Saturday. Oh, tomorrow. Tomorrow, yes. Tomorrow. All right. Just in Oakland on Monday. Uh, Oakland Motown Monday Yay! with DJ Malachi Good and job, Technique. Baby. Hello, Stranger Monday. We'll see the flyer. All right, we out of here, guys. Peace. 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 Peace.